Hey everyone, your host Nick here, and you're listening to the official podcast of 4playernetwork.com. First, I want to remind you that we are a fully independent podcast, quite literally just a group of friends who have met once a week since 2008 to talk about video games. If you like our show, the best thing you can do for us is be active in our community. I recommend Discord. You can subscribe to our show, leave us a review on your preferred podcast service, or if you're so inclined, bless us with your patronage on Patreon or Twitch. If you're new, all you need to know is this. We record these shows live every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Central on Twitch, and the audio version launches on all podcast services on Friday morning. Patreon and Twitch supporters will even get the show a day early on Thursdays. But if you want to know more about any of this, about what we do, or find all the important links you need, simply visit us at 4playernetwork.com. And that's it. This is the only ad you'll ever hear on this show. So with that said, thank you for listening. Let's get started. Video games. We're here to talk about them. Hey everyone, welcome to Four Player Pocket. Seven hundred and eighty-one, I believe, is the episode number. It's mm-hmm. January thirtieth, twenty twenty-four. I'm your host, Nick Henderson, uh, joined this evening by uh, Brad Simons. Yo, talking about Fire Emblem. Uh, Crispy. Hello. Just had a birthday. Happy birthday, Crispy. Oh, thanks. And Christopher birthday. Davis, who didn't have a birthday. It was not my birthday, but thank you. You're well. You're welcome. Anyways, hey everyone, welcome. It's been two weeks since we recorded a show. Uh, if you tuned in last week, we had some, we had a pretty good time playing. Y'all missed it. We, Nolan and I had a pretty good time playing Lethal Company with some members of the community, and it was a grand old time because I feel like it's impossible to play that game and not have a grand old time. Um, so thanks to everybody who tuned in last week to play with us. But uh, but tonight. We're back to business. We're here to talk about video games and everything that comes with it. Um, we're going to talk about Prince of Persia and the Lost Crown. We're going to talk about Tekken 8. And then we have um, what I would say is a exciting t- topic of discussion followed by a not-so-thrilling topic of conversation. Uh, it's been a weird and... and I mean, weird is maybe selling it short. It's been an, kind of an awful week in the game and gaming industry. Uh, for a number of reasons, but we'll talk a little bit about that later. Um, before we get into it, though, Fantasy Critic is moving along at a uh, at a clip, right? There's like been four or five or three, three or four game releases, I think, since we last spoke. Everybody's everybody's well, picking yeah. up dubs, man. Dubs, yeah. Left so far, there's dubs. Nolan had a pretty big L, but you know, besides that, mm. games are scoring well. But the only reason Nolan has a pretty big L is because he was he had to do a counter pick, which we've all done, and I think we're all going to end up with huge L's when it comes to our counter picks this year. His is just uh, earlier rather than later. Yeah, maybe. Um, so you know, uh, you know, it's crazy because 2024 is starting out pretty. Like the game games are scoring really well, but it's not just the games we drafted. Even other like random like indie games I've seen and stuff like shit is popping off, and it's January. Yeah. And all, yeah. all this is to say that um, 2023 is just another year. This shit's already fire. This 2024 is already fire. And I mean, it, maybe for you, maybe for you. No. Uh, well, for other people, cool people who like enjoying video games and laughing at things, you know, for some, for someone like me who doesn't really have any feelings or thoughts whatsoever about Yakuza well, or Tekken. Um, dark thoughts uh oh 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 you specific okay never mind never mind yes. i mean it's just it's, i'm not saying anything negative about those games they just don't do anything for me really but you know i'm well, i'm excited you know? that here's the thing it's exciting when i mean it's always good to have good video games coming out i'm glad people are eating eating well and we have persona 3 comes out to, uh in t- two two days not tomorrow mm-hmm. but the day yeah, after tomorrow and uh, that that's that's scoring well i mean Speak for yourself. I haven't. I'm going to be trying it. Um, and I'm hoping Nolan's maybe, because I know Nolan's a big Persona fan, and I know he's, I think 3 is like kind of long been his favorite, if I recall. So I'm hoping he's going to pick that up and play it, because I'm going to be coming at it uh, completely fresh. Bad. I don't want to hear anybody's thoughts on Persona 3. We've played that before. I want to hear his thoughts on Power World. Uh, is he all playing he plays Power? is Pokemon these days. Yeah, right? Right? I want to know what he thinks about Power. Where the fuck is Nolan? about to jump off uh, the edge on power world <laughs> maybe wait, that's where he is right now wait crispy i, I heard you no. can like enslave and eat people 
What? And yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes, you can. Because <laughs> you can capture people just like you can capture Pokemon. Yeah. And if you can capture it, you can. The game's like. If you can, the game's you like. Can it's it. a little unethical, but you can do it. <laughs> like, wow. Okay. Well, you know. It's I've, just a Valheim, right? It, or an Ark. It's, it, it, it is, seems but like, like you're, you're catching Pokemon to be like your slaves like like you build factories and make them work the factories and yeah. like, you Christ. build plantations and make them like work the fields like it's kind that's of fucking weird <laughs> yeah i saw the donkey video on it and it is it's nuts <laughs> what this game actually fucking is yes yeah. guys i'm gonna be honest all i've really so I've, i kind of tuned out the moment i realized it was just like a really gross kind of like Nintendo, uh, like amalgamation of like popular Dude, I, Nintendo like, games in like a really egregious way. Let's so just, I just kind of like no, I, I, like are huge. there's there's a little bit of like a, a tacky quality to it for sure, but like I think it's I think the concept is like I think it's stretching a little farther. I think it's starting to become something that's like its own little like absurdist little thing like it's fucking weird but is it, yeah. i don't think it's gonna weird. end up being a little thing because i feel like at the end of the year it's gonna probably end up being one of like it's gonna well, be like the among us yeah, of this I year mean, probably no, or something no. you know what i mean, I mean it's not, with it's not among us levels without no. commenting no. about the actual quality of the game i just think like the the idea of it has gone beyond like let's rip off pokemon to like what? some like, to, to some like weird place the <laughs> like, first video I, I watched of pal world it was like a dude running up to a cliff and then like it played the little like breath of the wild jingle They're like Dum. oh like, yeah, yeah that and then he jumped yeah. off the cliff and had a glider and i was like no i'm out this is this no is too much. yeah i can't do this i mean that's definitely still part of it like like there's definitely a lot of like other people's shit just kind of like mashed together but the amalgamated whole is um <laughs> kind of like a strange chimeric monster other than just like a bland mishmash of other games i don't That's know what she said. it's weird like i don't know i think i i feel like the way all this stuff comes together is just very strange yep <laughs> yep and uh if nothing else it's fascinating so you know we'll kind of see how that plays out but right now it's like super popular so we'll see how yeah, long it but lasts that's just because it's yeah. the flavor of the month survival you think it's gonna fizzle yeah. out pretty quick well yeah, i mean i mean it, it's a I lot of it. people and like the answer is yeah but but the thing is it's still gonna have enough people playing like any really popular matter. survival game right like someone yeah. in chat just mentioned enshrouded which is literally another survival game that launched after pal world and is like the number two selling game on Steam right now. I mean, th these are just really huge, popular games. This is the genre that blows up. It has less to do with the fact that it has anything to do with Pokemon and more the fact that like it was Mimi and it's a survival game and that's what people buy and play. All right. And you know enough. what? Those kind of like, those kind of do fizzle out, right? Those kind of don't stick in the, in the, the uh, zeitgeist for very long, I don't long. Know. yeah they right. can i mean it's just kind of like you know valheim was huge right, right when that first came out but who's talking about valheim anymore it's still got a ton of people playing it but ain't no one talking about it anymore. But it's funny that, but was the time... like, that was like a really high quality version of, of one of these you know but the time valheim hits one point like officially hits 1.0 it's not even going to be like popular anymore like it, it relatively speaking it, no you know but it I mean? will it just won't have the zeitgeist anymore right and and that's fine because it still has a lot of people it's just less millions right it's just yeah. you know well, i mean that's the, why the greater... like relatively speaking you know it's, I mean, it's still gonna be popular of course but i mean it's, it's really a good portion of it is really about the frequency of updates and new content that come to this these early access games yeah. and you you gotta turn that stuff out if you want to maintain that a good portion of that body that wants to play your game I like to wait for that 1.0. I'm sitting here like watching all these people talking about Gloomwood and stuff, and I'm like, oh man, I want to play your game. Just finish it. Yeah. And then I'll play it. That's kind of how it's exactly how I felt about Baldur's Gate and, and Hades. You know, it, it, it Ultra waiting killer. pays up. Waiting pays off, but you know, I get it. I totally get it. It's 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 definitely a like the uh the development cycle that comes with doing early access. There's obvious benefits to doing it, so it is what it is. All right. Um, 
but also we got a little sidetracked off fantasy critic here but aside from uh, uh um like Tekken 8 and and Tekken 8 and uh like a dragon are both scoring uh, they're both sitting at like a 90 right now with like uh-huh. quite a few reviews so those I mean, those are doing reviews now and, Persona um, 3 is sitting at an 89 last time I checked mm-hmm. um and, and Grand Blue is out this week as well and the reviews for Grand Blue which is that the first game that'll be on my list uh that reviews come out tomorrow it was like i think it'll be like nine o'clock or ten o'clock tomorrow so i'm a little nervous i'm a little nervous to see what that pulls in because that was a bit of a hail mary for me um but i'm yo taking you a know what the word it. on the street is what? that suicide heard... squad's all right yeah i mean the street oh that suicide was... squad yeah dude are you playing it Chris me yeah, I know you were kind of you were like teetering. You were like, oh, oh yeah, because I was about to spend a hundred dollars on the <laughs> on the special edition to play early. You know what? God, I was so close, but I didn't. <laughs> but I did. But but are you gonna play it like that? Like the on Friday? Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I am, sure. I am I am interested to hear about. It. We were talking about it a little bit before the show, and this is not necessarily meant to be a reflection on what I think the game ultimately is going to be. I just I feel I think I've just kind of come to terms. I was like, I just. I don't think it's, it's for a, me. I think I'm probably just going to sit player looter shooter with yeah. a battle pass. OK. And yeah, yeah, that is its own set of baggage and and criticisms. But like the game itself looks kind of cool. I mean, like, Kratos is in chat. He's, a, you know, he's played 18 hours of it and he says he's enjoying it. So but I've also heard words like soulless being tossed around by like critics and whatnot so i don't know i don't really know what to think i don't know I've, what to fucking think we're gonna have all to i've ever see. heard is that the story is the best part of the game yeah the story characterization going because on. there's one there's one moment in particular that's already causing lots of uh yeah backlash I mean, it, it it almost feels like from an outsider's perspective who doesn't have all the context but i think i kind of know what's going on it almost looks like suicide squad is having its last of us two moments Mm-hmm. Um, but for different reasons, with a little a little different context. Uh, no, it's it's like I mean, not really. It is exactly the same kind of thing. It I is. Heard you okay. kill the Justice yeah. League. Yeah, it is. I mean, that is, it is the, exactly. That is in objective. the title. People are getting a little more work. ghoulish about it this time. Right. Uh, but yeah, it's it's the same stupid bullshit. So. <laughs> Needless to say, I'm sure we'll be talking about Suicide Squad in the future. Um, I'd be really interested to see how that pans out. Um, our our Discord server is not very hot on the subject, but yeah, yeah. No one I've seen a healthy a mix. Well, a, few, a couple of people are, but you know. Um, Look, games is a service. Games are the devil, and we kind of just want to see them fail. Yeah. I mean, that's why everyone. Regardless, so, so yeah, I mean that, that is true. Like that is true, regardless of like the actual game itself. I mean, there's like five major games some of that service titles on. coming out in February. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty wild. Um, you know, I just realized I haven't checked this week because I know. So, has there been any bids? <laughs> I, like in the last yeah, week, yeah, someone picked up a game. Oh fuck! What is what was it? I think Ed picked up. Um, let me see. I have it open right here. Collection history. Uh, Genesis Games picked up uh, Pacific Drive. Oh, no. that's wait. Was that the last one that was? That was the last one, I'm, but that was on the twentieth. Pulling up the league history right now. Oh, that's old news then. Hmm. So, and and since we record these podcasts on Tuesdays now, we don't really get to talk about the current week's bids because they go they process on Thursday night. So I don't know if anything's been. But here's the thing: this week, and we're going to talk about this a little bit later because tomorrow is Sony's first big state of play of the year, um, which snuck up on us. And But it's like a 45-minute 45, 45 presentation tomorrow with 15 games, and there's some big games that are that are yeah, heavily, heavily rumored to be included in this. Let's be real. It's a Sony state of play, and those never... I mean, impress. they don't lift the world on fire because they're state of plays, right? But, like, people who are yeah. who have been waiting to hear about Silent Hill 2 or there's a rumor that Judas is going to be shown for the first time in years. There's uh, Death Stranding 2 is supposedly going to be featured heavily on it. Like, there's a lot of big stuff apparently being... Sh- oh, Stellar Blade apparently is heavily rumored to be there. Uh, so, we don't need to see that game. I want to see Stellar Blade. I, I, I would love to see it next year. How about that? 
Oh, is, well, it, is that a counter pick? Did you counter pick that? Yes. That what's going on here? Okay. Yeah, no, I yeah. want to see. I want to see the Stellar Blade. So um, there, there is something interesting that's been happening today. Um, okay. Evidently, on the Xbox, there is a placeholder preload for oh. something related to Metal Gear Solid 3 Delta. Yes. Now, here's, um, what, I'll, here's what I'll say about that, Chris cool. Davis. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised at all to see Delta show up at tomorrow's state of play. They're touting this state of play as like their first big, because, you know, they do quite a few of these throughout the year, but a lot of them are like 15 to 20 minutes, like three or four games tops. This is like 40 minutes, 15 games, big stuff rumored to be there. Wouldn't be at all surprised to see Delta show up. Mm -hmm. um, I don't I don't necessarily know if this placeholder thing on Microsoft's website is really any ne necessarily any indication of well, it. Um, also, but, uh, all the Metal Gear games are currently on sale on digital. I mean, it, it makes sense. Oh, here's OK. Well, here's one thing I have, because the big and we'll talk more about this later. But one of the major rumors is that Death Stranding 2 is going to have its big reveal, like big, like eh. dive kind of tomorrow. But like, would they feature Death Stranding 2 in the same presentation where they're also showing off Metal Gear <laughs> Solid Delta? I feel like mm. that could be a little. I mean, it's not like a stage presentation. So, you know, it's not like we're sitting here having to watch Kojima kind of react to these things, right? But, like, I feel like just the two things being in the same presentation almost feels awkward. <laughs> but who knows? I mean, Maybe like... you track inside baseball, but for most people, I don't think... I don't know. You think? I mean, I... I you think, think they're I mean, really worried about the optics or something like that? There's there's so. the optics and internal training. politics that are going on there. Um, I personally think that Sony's, like you know what? It's 2024. We don't have much announced for the back half of the year. Let's start. Let's put out the big guns. Let's start I showing mean, things I, off. Yeah. I do think this presentation tomorrow is going to be what's kind of laying out. Maybe not the rest of the year, but it's it's certainly we're going to have. I think we're going to have a much better idea of what's where Sony what stands. What do you think about Death Stranding 2 anyways? I feel like that that only works once. They, you can't just have another Death Stranding, right? Uh, I mean, here, yeah, I, right. it is. Do Kojima. we want to just go ahead and talk about the state of play? And not... Yeah, let's just do it. Fuck it. OK, we're doing it live. All right. So Death Stranding 2 is heavily, heavily rumored to be a major component. In fact, prior to the announcement of the state of play, Kojima was tweeting some some cryptic things. There were some things being retweeted and there was rumors circling that Death Stranding 2 would get its its big reveal within 15 days of the rumor starting to circulate. Right. And then. And then, like, two days later, State of Play comes up, and it's, like, going to be so confused. this big thing. So... They already announced this Stranding 2. Right? Yeah, I mean, they announced it, but it was more of, like, a cinematic thing. Like, we don't really okay. know anything about it. Like, Are there going to be guns in this one, you think? Yeah, I mean, there were... I mean, not maybe not... I, if there are guns, they're not going to be guns in the traditional sense, because... Per, well, preferably not he and blood and shit weapons. What are they going to do this time? They can't. It can't just be. I hope it's more people and walking, shit weapons. Right? Actually, walking. We're gonna make a road together. Is it, is it just gonna be another one of those in a new place? So, God, I hope not. Okay, here. Let me just. Okay, let me just say the the thing that I've heard. And again, I have no. I don't know how. Uh, this might just me. Might be me spreading rumors unnecessarily. But the rumor that's circulating is that the game is titled. Death Stranding 2 on the beach or something along those lines. Yeah. On the beach. <laughs> on yeah. the beach. That's uh, so stupid. Right near the beach. <laughs> you think it's going to, oh, there's going to be like ocean traversal, maybe? Maybe. Maybe Dude, we're trying to build a bridge cool. across an ocean. Uh, <gasps> don't they? Maybe like, we're trying it's to. A, like, water. It's a boat game? <laughs> I never played oh. that first one. But I feel oh, like. Oh, shit. You, can't, there's you no didn't? Back. didn't either. It was all maybe. about, hey, we're building a road together, y'all. You know, you can't have that. Again. Well, sure, Brad, gotta, what I... it's got to be something. There's got to be some kind of thematic evolution to it, right? It's not just yeah. more the same. I mean, it, here's, it, no, here's... I mean, it's got to be more than thematic, though, right? Because, like, think about all the Metal Gear Solid <laughs> games. They're so different, right? Like, he never just made another one of those. They were yeah. all, like, dramatically, like... I have oh, no... I mean, that's kind of what I'm... Violently yeah. different. I have faith that whatever Death Stranding 2 is, it's going to look and be dramatically different than Death Stranding 1, while also being just as bonkers 
crazy and obtuse yeah, crazy um which That's i mean i'm here for yeah. and and there's gonna be a lot of cool gadgets and stuff right That's... i think they're gonna up their ante on Maybe. the gadgets I, th- I think they're gonna double down on trying to make the world feel because you know throughout death stranding one the world felt very isolated and very lonely which i think was very intentional but the whole thing is about trying to build up those connections right so in a sequel i feel like it would make sense to try and show the player the impact they're having on society by trying to make the world feel like it's growing and like you know people becoming you know know what i mean I mean, the thing is that the entire first game was about building out infrastructure to reconnect North America. And so, like, if you're going to do a direct sequel, you have to show the consequences of those actions from that game. So you would have to show the country slowly rebuilding itself and people come coming back together instead of being in isolated communities. Um, And how does how do the people of that world live uh, like especially as like society starts to build, like how do they live in without you in harmony with like the weird shit in that game? If you know what I'm talking about, like there's a reason yeah. people live underground in bunkers in Death Stranding One, and building roads between them, I don't think is necessarily going to solve that problem. So maybe it's a maybe it's a game about solving the other problems that were introduced in that first game. Whatever it is, I have faith that this is not just going to be another Death Stranding. I think it's going to be something. I think the big, big perk of this game is going to be a reworking of the combat. Um, Based on the director's cut content that came out a couple years ago, um, in which it was very much an homage to fucking Metal Gear, um, I think they're really going to rework it into a stronger. Uh, a tactics and combat experience. I think they'll, God, I hope that they, they de-emphasize the delivery Don't do aspect it. of the game. That's the whole game. Well, then, then it, it should not be that. It should okay. not be that. Chris Davis, this just sounds like you are coming from a place of like, Hey, that game was not for me. So maybe that's okay. You Look, I'm, just, I'm just saying the infrastructure. Game? Okay. The infrastructure thing I liked. I 100% support that aspect of the game. It's just that the core gameplay loop of Death Stranding was taking packages and delivering them to places. Like, you know, what? I, while building out the infrastructure, and that's the more important thing, I'm just saying, de emphasize that. Let that be an aspect, but let it be a much smaller thing. Take up the combat and, and build off the story, you know, being more uh, focused on the consequences of your actions for the first game. The, and then I think you got a pretty good sequel. I think Orca's right. Come on, Chris, Lauren's shooting. That's what Chris, you want. Chris Come Davis on, man. hates mailmen. We're trying to feel things over here, Chris Davis. Look, look, I don't think you have anything to worry about because I think, if anything, this is just going to be wildly different. Also, don't... maybe don't let Kojima name characters. Just okay. kind of no, take the pin no, away from him. You're a, no, you're you a, you're a crazy boring? person. Come on. Yeah, you just don't like Kojima. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. I mean that it, that is kind of true. I have soured on Kojima over, over the years, but like, die you're hard, also, man. Please. You're also you're yeah. also over here Come like on. being super excited. You're over here being super Chris excited Davis, for Metal Gear Solid saying. Delta, which is in, which is also from the mind yeah. of, of like Hideo the Kojima. dude's name is Solid Snake, and you're like he's got he, he names things badly now. Back then, it was so good. <laughs> well, back then he was a fucking odd tour that was creating incredible things. And by the way, Solid Snake was not his fucking name. His name was David. Oh, for fuck's wow. sake, dude. Yeah, come on. <laughs> like he, like people he had names in these oh, games. Like, He's just die Hardman he is just Die he Hardman. He doesn't have has... another name. Yeah, that's uh, sick. I, that's actually everyone, a good name. Everyone's like always like, oh, he just loves Hollywood now. It's all about his his celebrity buddies. Like, it, that's literally David Hayter was in some like fucking superhero movie he loved. Like, why do you think he was even probably cast in the first fucking place? It's so. It's uh, so. I mean, he does have says... a fairly distinct voice. Big Wazoo says, don't disrespect hot, cold man. I'm saying Kojima has always been on the same bullshit. He's always been on the same bullshit and it's no different now. Okay. Now you're like, mm, I'm grown up and, and, and die Hardman is not cool enough anymore. Like, what are you saying? Uh, 
I, you know, I'm just saying if there's one if there's one creator out there who I don't want to take seriously and be like everyone else, it's Kojima. Uh, you know me. I'm I'm kind of the, I I tend to be the old fuddy duddy here who I like. You know, I like more grounded things. I like darker stories. You know, I I tend to shy away from like some of the things that I know y'all love. You know, we're, you know, and it's just be just, feel like just for try reason, not to Kojima, say something I'm, too racist here, uh, Nick. Oh, oh, no. uh, OK, that. I've got something that everyone can agree with. Shut up. OK, add more systems to the game. Do not have the BTs be static areas. Let them be roaming things. Let them be around the much more just dynamically roaming the world. Well, first of all, sure. OK, I'll give you that. Brad has no idea what you're talking about. But second of all, like we're I mean, talking about, we're talking about a sequel to a triple A video game that was a new IP at the time from a brand new studio. And let me just say, if if the gaming industry is nothing, not is nothing else, it is like more so than I think film and television. You know, with, and a lot of times, like you see sequels, especially in film, where like it, with sequels, it's like diminishing returns a lot of the time and i feel like video games historically have always kind of been the opposite trajectory because they start they tend to like hone their systems and get better at storytelling and make better worlds budgets get bigger and so it's like games have always had kind of the opposite trajectory so i feel like i don't think you have anything to worry about in that regard i think death stranding 2 will ultimately end up feeling like a massive shift or a massive improvement it's funny you say uh, that because literally last podcast we were talking about how Hellblade's a fifty dollar game that's also going to be eight hours again. You know, it, everyone expected the sequel to be bigger, better, and more badass, right? Um, well, that's Chris, I think Chris that's just Clicky because you used to say, but like it absolutely wasn't that, right? Okay, well, I, I think that is a byproduct of just kind of like what we've been, what we've been, um, um, tr- kind of trained to think about the industry which is of course the natural assumption is that games are always going to strive to be bigger and whatever and, and we we year after year we collectively as an industry of people who play video games tend to say stop doing this not every single game has to be huge not every single game has to be bigger so i think it should be celebrated when a studio doesn't try to overshoot you know like, like they know what they want to make they make it and they don't feel pressured or don't give in to the pressure to try and make their game insanely large. I think that should be celebrated when it comes to Hellblade 2. I don't certainly feel yeah. any less excited about Hellblade 2 because it's not some giant open world thing. Yeah, I feel kind of silly it. for assuming that it was going to be that, I guess, if anything. Um, but I do think still, more often than not, that is the case. And, you know, Kojima's fucking crazy. <laughs> he's he's going to do crazy stuff. He's too crazy for his own good. Okay, we are. Who you ask. We, he, just, look, he just he just needs an editor. That's all I'm saying. Do not give that man 100 percent creative freedom. He does. He has an editor. Why? His name is Hideo what Kojima. What are you afraid of? What are you afraid of? I'm just I'm just saying that we like be having this conversation about Kojima. Yeah, Hideo like, Kojima the, is like the modern day video like, game equivalent of George Lucas, and Star Wars is excellent, but that Star Wars was made in the edit by someone else, his wife. OK, I'm just saying, saying I'm just okay, saying, what else give him that one. This is absurd. I mean, that, OK, All right, we are going. That, that's a little different. OK, no, I, let's okay. rein it in. Let's rein it in. I don't I don't want to sit here and spend the next 30 minutes talking about you talking Death about Stranding too. the difference between a movie and a video. OK, I'm... there is there is a high likelihood that tomorrow we'll see some Death Stranding 2 and then we can revisit this conversation. But like what else? So there's like 15 games that are rumored to be or not rumored. They have Sony has said as much. There's going to be 15 games. And of course, some of those games are going to be small. Some of those games are going to be, you know, stuff that we're not necessarily interested in, of course. But there's going to be a handful of games at this thing that are probably going to be things we're, of course, going to be keeping our eye your, on. Nick, is your bathroom break going to be Rise of the Ronin? Uh, no, I'm actually, I, I feel like, so I think, I think Rise of the Ronin is one of the things that's confirmed to be shown tomorrow. And I feel like that's, they haven't given that a release date yet, have they? Or did they? Yeah, they I have. Can't, okay, they did. Oh uh, yeah, it's like August yeah, I guess it, I guess it's yeah. not on your little pre-order spreadsheet. No, it's on, it's on my, it's on my fucking spreadsheet, bro. I don't have I that. You've been talking yeah. shit since yeah. the beginning. I know you. I've been, I've been listening. No, 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 no. Like, I think you misunderstand. There's, I feel there's a lot of people, especially in our Discord, who are getting really negative about Rise of the Ronin. And what? 
Yeah, this, it's I mean, you, right? Who in our no. Discord has been negative? I didn't. I've never. I don't think I've ever had anything ex- Quote, expressly negative. Literally, last but... time we saw it, you said this shit looks like a PS3 game. <laughs> okay, first of all, uh, I did not say it like scathing. that. That is, I did not say it like that. I said, I said it doesn't necessarily stack up to other games that are coming out. I know what it was. It was like a br- where the fuck is Ghost of Tsushima too? Because I ain't playing this Japanese bullshit. The irony. Oh, I was right? gonna say the irony. <laughs> yeah, Japanese can't make good games about samurais and ninjas. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> you quote literally word for word, Nick. Crispy, why did you say that? <laughs> it's not my fault, guys. It's not my fault. I'm, look, I'm excited about Rise of the Ronin. I. Personally, I have not seen a lot of people saying this, but I have, I am, I do have my worries, right? Worry that they're heading in a direction focusing on the the things they're not really good at as a studio. Team Ninja talked about this Um, story, like they're bad at story. Yeah, I don't want to be story focused. I don't want them to streamline the combat anymore. Wo Long was already going in the wrong direction. You so know, yeah, I, I have any, no concerns, but but I, I, I definitely want to see more. I went back and I watched the first big trailer again, and I was mm-hmm. like, "Oh, there's some, there's some cool shit here. This looks cool. This game, this game looks pretty cool." But you know what? Hey, Wolong looks cool. Let me tell you, Brad. Let me tell yeah. you this. Um, was, yeah, if I have any trepidations about Rise of the Ronin, I think it stems more from the fact um, that. I know that somewhere along the line, I kind of fell off of being interested in playing Wolong, and I just never touched it. I just, I literally, I played the demo. And Neo well, too. It's just funny because it keeps happening, and I, I want you to buy this game. But and I also say, well, played seventy I never hours of Neo. Neo. Like, what do you want from so. me? Like, I'm capable of playing and enjoying Japanese games. I know that's the meme, right? I know that. I know you finished Final joke. Fantasy 16. You're making the wrong choices. <laughs> I'm playing Persona Three. Okay. I don't give a shit about your take on Persona 3. That's a PS2 game, Nick. I don't care. I've never played it. I'm going to talk about it as someone who's never played it. God damn it. It's fine. Um, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. I mean, look, it comes Brad, out the same day as Dragon's Dogma 2, and I know you're going to be I fucking begrudgingly picked up Grand Blue Fantasy. I, actually, I want to play Grand Blue Fantasy. I'm nervous as hell about the reviews tomorrow. That's such a weird... That's such a weird... That's, a weird, that's the weird one for... I That's know what I'm saying. It is. You're like, I like Japanese games. I'm just choosing the wrong ones, is ah. what it seems like. Grand Wait, do you Blue think does Brad... not seem like your fucking flavor at all? What is going on? Hey, you know what yeah. you know what I think it is? You know what I think it is about Grand Blue Fantasy that turned me on? Um was the fact that like I felt so burned by Tales of Arise and it looks oh, very God. it looks very much like it's kind of doing the same. It's 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 hitting the same notes as Tales of Arise did for me prior to release. But I'm hoping maybe I enjoy the combat more and the story more. I don't know. Like I don't know. Like <laughs> I really, really, really oh. wanted to love Tales of Arise, and I. How much research not. have you done into Grand Blue Relink? I've watched a couple trailers. Don't worry about it. Don't buy that game. Just don't. Oh, buy I'm the not game. buying it until I until I okay. read about it. But uh, it's not what you think it is. Hey um, man. I'm gonna read about it. I'm gonna make. I'm gonna make an educated decision, and I'm gonna. Tr- and okay. if it if it sounds like exciting, I'm gonna play it. Uh, I'm gonna prove to you, Brad, this year. Here, you know what? Hot dog bet. I will play. I will play and complete ten Japanese games this year. <laughs> <laughs> they can't be like. It's got to be a literal JRPG. It can't be a JRPG no, no, no. Wait, no, no. made by Wait. a Western indie. Does dog. it have to be a JRPG or can it be a ja- like I'm talking about like a Japanese developed video game? Nintendo doesn't saying... count. Nintendo doesn't count. Okay. Okay. Excluding Nintendo. Okay. How about this? Do I have to like, run them by you and get your approval on yes. them? Like you have to sign off <laughs> the on them? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Start okay. making your list. All right. I will play and complete. I, I, yeah, I, I want to read this list. Remake. That doesn't count. Hey, Fuck here's you. a question. Here's a question. Did any everyone here anyone here play the Yuffie DLC? Yes. No, I, I did not. But so I heard Nick, good. when are you gonna play that? Right. I don't know. Should I? I mean, it's <laughs> good. It's it's Should legitimately you? good. Are you wait? But it's you know, you're you are gonna like, play Final Fantasy Seven. Is it remakes, easy to right? go back to and play it? Like, do I have to be? Because you know, some DLC is like kind of injected yes. into the yes. middle of a game. It is. It it has its own tutorial in there because Yuffie has a different yeah. play style. Um, yeah. I, is it just yeah. an access from the menu kind of thing, or is it like yeah. you have to go and yeah, load your game up and 
Okay. Okay. Oh, well, yeah. Fuck it. I'll play it. Does that yeah, count? You sh- I mean, you should, right? I mean, it's. All right. It's a, stand- it's a PS. I'm going to make a list, Brad. I'm going to make a list of 10 Japanese developed video games that I want I'm you to approve. And I'm going I to have try not even and finish seen them this it, year. And I'm already disappointing your list. Are you going to play Unicorn <laughs> Overlord? I want to. Okay. You better. Uh, it's okay. He hey, what else he is going to be at this state of play? So the other one of the other big rumors is that we're going to see Judas for the first time since it was announced. Mm-hmm. And if you if you don't remember, Judas is the first is the the game from Ken D- Levine's studio. Um, help me out, Chris Davis. What's it called? Ghost Story Games. Ghost Story Games. It looks very. If you remember the reactions to that first trailer, it looked very much like Bioshock in space, <laughs> which um, it's just I mean, it obviously, is it like. Yeah, but like, but it's weird. It like, it looked like System Shock, but more like Bioshock. Is that weird? Does that make sense? I don't remember. More cartoony. I can't be the first person to like r- notice the irony of calling this Judas when he s- he betrayed his entire studio to like splinter off to make this game with. A yeah, how small... do you? Why do you think they called it that? <laughs> Well, no, maybe maybe it's like some thematic like part of core to the game. Like he's going to look inward and uh, realize he's an asshat. Maybe. I mean, he is a bit of an asshat, but man, I've been. uh, I've been thinking a lot about. So I actually, you know, I'm not going to say that out loud. We live in a post atomic heart world. Can you just even, you know, live up to the. if, If atomic heart did anything for me, it gave it got me really excited about about Judas. I, dude, I reinstalled Bioshock recently on my Steam Deck. I was That's like, I'm gonna game. I'm gonna replay Bioshock. Um, and, That's not you know, a Japanese was, game. And, and and System Shock. You know, if you've by the way, guys, my top ten games of 2023 is officially out there. Uh, thank you, Chris Davis, for doing all the production on that. Appreciate it as always. But yeah, if you're if you want to see my ten favorite games of the year, go check out that video. I'm also working on a honorable mentions video, which is literally five or six games that at one point, at one point there was a version of my list where all of the games in that video were in the number ten slot on on my list. Like, yeah, I was just sort of thinking about those games that you didn't put on there. There was um, I know it crushed me. It crushed me. So I'm making a shorter a shorter little honorable mentions video uh, uh, top 10 number I, 11s. I wanted you to get so much more controversial with your list you know put, you know the, you know there's a couple of games that i know you love that should have been on that list and people would have been been like ah rabble rabble and you should have just done it just for the lulls and you know actually there was, put there was a version of my list where both of the games that you're thinking of were in the number t- in that spot oh, i know man. exactly which two games you're thinking of you, and you yes chickened out dude uh, no, out. dude, I didn't chicken out. It was I. I just kept asking myself like, which one feels, which one feels the most wrong, leaving off my list, and oh, I. Oh, up... here, let's transition to the thing that you were supposed to. You had some homework. You <gasps> were supposed to screenshot your playtime on Baldur's Gate versus Starfield. Okay, well, first of all, I didn't even remember that until just now, so I can't really do that. Maybe I'll do it during the break. Minus minus the Baldur's Gate you played yesterday, that doesn't count because I I, I asked you to do this before you played well, Baldur's Gate. What do you want me to tell you? <laughs> okay, we'll talk about that during the break. Let's let's okay. finish the state of play conversation here. What do you anything else you want to say about Judas? Are you excited to see Judas? I know I am. Like you, you said, know. I live uh, in a post atomic heart world, and I'm officially. You know, I was just yesterday, two days ago, listening to some that Bioshock Infinite um remix remix whatever of girls just want to have fun mm, mm-hmm. like, I, man i had that game, on my pod and it's still as disappointing me. as i thought this game was it did some pretty cool things mostly that sort of stuff but um yeah. i i i i'm if i if i can manage it i'm going to, and depending on how this bioshock replay goes i'm probably i i would like to replay all three of the games and plus the minerva's den dlc for sure um and the, so and honestly, the Bioshock Infinite DLC. We're really yeah. getting off topic here. Yeah. Uh, uh, so. State of play. State of play, gentlemen. Uh, what what, what, what else what do you want to see? Disappointment. There's going to be disappointment. Well, of course there's going to be disappointment. That's not the there's question, There's going to be some though. PSVR 2 games for the, you know, three yeah. people that have that, That's supposing and Sony still wants to support that fucking thing. Do you think they're going to show Behemoth? I feel like they kind of need what to. What even is that? 
It's the Shadow of the Colossus looking game for the yeah. PSVR. Also, if that was that was picked up. I think Ed picked that up or uh, Carlos drafted that. Oh, was it Carlos? Carlos drafted it, so it's on Carlos. Carlos's yeah. list. Which honestly is a game I consider. I was like, that's a kind of a deep cut. I don't know if I have enough, enough faith in the in the hardware to really risk putting that on my list. But hey, it's it's on there. Um, We're living in a post like, Asgard's Wrath two world. It's true. That is true. Um, was okay. December game, by the way. So the way, out of I, left. Re, sorry, real quick before you finish that sentence, Chris Davis. I just want to Sterling Sky and chat. I just want to clarify in case anybody else misheard me. I did not say I was going to play 10 JRPGs. That's insane. I'm not blah, okay? I said I was going to play Can 10 I answer this question Japanese for I developed answer this question games. For I want to answer the question. So I think says, how the hell are you going to finish Baldur's Gate 3, 10 JRPGs, and the Bioshock series? Um, the answer is, he's probably just going to play through all the Bioshock games and not get to the others. <laughs> That's the most Nick shit I've ever heard in my life. Hey, man, I'm loving the shit out of Baldur's Gate 3. I played... I played some- bunch of that last night Stop telling good. me it's that good. you think i care about validation or i want to hear your your respect or appreciation for the game look i know it's a goat i don't want to hear that from you i want to talk about what you think should happen to carlac at the end of the game you it, know i uh, want to get into fucking spoilers did okay. you kill those eagles nick yeah i, I tried uh, to, i tried to, to not do that and yeah, I, I failed i failed on the animal of the uh what, what's you, like the, talk to him or anything I, I couldn't like I it gave me the chance to roll for uh you what is couldn't. it animal it gave I failed the ch- the pers- the check I failed no, the I mean control. like like you didn't like approach them with somebody who had like speak with animal I have speak with animal I mean but, but I, I mean was did you them. use it I didn't have a chance okay can we talk about this during the break. I, I had every intention of not murdering those eagles last night, and, and I ended up murdering did. those eagles, okay? And I was really sad about it, but I, I'm also trying not to save scum like crazy in this game, yeah. so I didn't, I didn't do it. People gonna die, you know? Sometimes... But not eagles! I don't want eagles to die! I love eagles! Yeah. I just yeah. murdered the happens. eagles. There's so many characters. Murdered a mother and her children. Yeah, I felt terrible. Okay, <laughs> uh, state of play. Are we gonna see little devil inside? Oh, sorry. Maybe. Davis, you had thought you started, and then I interrupted you rudely. Why don't you go ahead and finish that? Thank you. Um, so, a out of left field game that or thing we might actually see is the next project from Media Vision. They are the Sega studio behind Valkyria Chronicles. Um, you think, they, wait, are you pulling this out of your ass, or do you have reason to wait, wait, wait. to think this? No, I've I've been thinking about it for the past week, and Valkyria Chronicles Four came out in 2018. Oh, so this is the this is purely like a I have a good feeling about this. This, this is, is uh, yeah, this is a hat bullshit. Uh, uh, tinfoil hat probably, but perhaps. But like, doesn't it feel like it's time for us to find out? E- even if it's not Valkyria Chronicles, like, don't you think it's time we find out what this developer is doing? Guys, I swear to God, if that Those if are... that somehow ha- like if we get a trailer for for that tomorrow, I officially am on the train no it's not going to be Valkyrie Chronicles. Chronicles. He's saying yeah I'm not saying it's really Valkyrie Chronicles 4 or 5 which is unhinged is unhinged the <laughs> media vision my god that's the name of the developer what are you talking about no, I know I'm very familiar with media vision they're like they made like wild arms and shit back in the day right yeah like they <laughs> That's such. That's like the deepest. You know, I was thinking like the when deepest, you started talking, cut, I was cut. like, he's going to name some unknown Eastern European developer or something, and you went with Media Vision. That's fucking crazy, dude. Who knows what they're doing? Like, do they even still exist anymore? That's the real question. That's kind of the. I I hate to say it like this, but my assumption was the answer to that question is no. <laughs> so I don't. Well, the, I mean, the other possibility, I think, is that they may be contributing to the uh, the set of uh, Sega remakes that are happening right now, of which there are supposed that, to be rumored several more that have not been announced. That you know what? I could see that. Right. Because they also worked on like not Shining Force, but like some of the late era Shining games, mm-hmm. like from like the PS2 era, which yeah. are like, you know, not great but i mean media vision i I can't believe that's the developer that came out of your mouth that is insane chris davis hey i'm for it i'm all for it but like they could literally make anything 
unhinged Chris Davis for the win. Uh, I'm still waiting. I'm waiting to see what Chris Davis wills into existence in 2024. Yeah, they they work on Digimon games as well. They're they're yeah. almost. Like, yeah. We just just let him cook, oh. man. Just let him cook. Okay, real quick. I have two questions. I have two questions. They need a welfare check, not a let them cook. Welfare check. Oh, that's fucked up. Okay, two questions. <laughs> Uh, little devil inside. What's going on with that? You think we'll see that tomorrow? I sure. I don't even so. remember what that game what is. Okay. State of that play seems announced. like the perfect place to show it. I mean, they've shown it at like two state of plays in the past. Like, it's I time. Know, right? It's time. That's a game like, that everyone would have drafted like three years ago on their fantasy critic if we were even doing it back then, and it's yep. still not out. And now no one drafts it because they're like, it's like vaporware now. It's Prince routine. of the Universe says that. Game. <laughs> Prince of the Universe says that game is faker than Silk Song, <laughs> and that hurts. Was, was this game announced in 2015? Uh, maybe. I think that. I mean, that doesn't sound. I don't know. That's a good question. Hang on, I'm, right, and, I'm looking this up to be certain. And the other, the other game I just want to mention here because obviously I have a lot invested in it. It was a Kickstarter and, game in April 2015. That is crazy. That is fucking crazy. Okay. The last game I want to talk about in relation to the state of play, me personally, is just. It's it's looking like it's very likely we're going to get our next look at Silent Hill 2 tomorrow. The Team Bloober Silent Hill 2 remake. Um, what's, what, what do you think? What's the the, uh, the over-under on that? You think it's going to happen? Oh, that one's your baby, dude. I was, I, you know, I work with someone who was like, you know what? I kind of like that Blair Witch game. And I was like, it, holy shit, dude. There's you two, were there number two on this us. planet. <laughs> it's like, who's like... I guess y'all exist. That's great, dude. But you know, we're everyone is just after their disaster with the medium. Like, if you really look into why the medium was panned, like I, I know, every, I know, because it seems it, like they were the worst people to do. You know, we don't. We've talked about it. We've talked. About uh, all it. I'm saying is, this is your baby. Everyone else is just kind of like, look, man. Hey, what I'll say about prove it to us. We're not gonna hold out hey, our hopes. Silent Hill Two is one of my favorite games of all time. So if you think yeah. I'm not, if you think I'm just going into this assuming I'm going to love it, you're crazy. You're absolutely fucking crazy. I am excited for it. I'm very excited for it. I want to give them the benefit of the doubt, but I know there's also a chance they're gonna fuck it up royally. Um, which will make yeah, me very yeah. upset. The difference is I, I think most people are kind of expecting them to fuck it up as, as opposed to like hoping they don't fuck it up. So I have enjoyed that's why, more like, Bloober games than I, I, I have enjoyed more Bloober games than I have disliked. And I, and to me, the problems with the medium stemmed more from mechanical, just like disinterest. And the problem with the writing that you were alluding to a minute ago, I would much rather them make that mistake on a game like the medium and learn from it before t- making Silent Hill 2 than just going straight into Silent Hill 2 and then making that mistake. And that would be fucking terrible. Um, but yeah. again, I, you know, I, I know there's a lot writing on this, but that doesn't mean I'm not excited for it. Um, so, so we'll we'll see. A few things I want to throw out there. Um, Sony does like to do blocks of publisher games. They'll sign a deal and they'll do three or four games in a row from a publisher. Um, I, I'm i thinking about the schedule for Bandai Namco, um, and they've got a bunch of things coming out this year, like Sandland, like No Lightmares 3, uh, the Dark Pictures Anthology, the next game in that, and uh, the new Dragon Ball Sparking Zero game. I think we could see Just all of those Elden there. Elden Ring DLC. And the Elden Ring DLC, obviously. Ooh, um, you're going to show that tomorrow? I oh, fuck. I think that's Why really the fuck not? Yeah. There, there's so. been rumors that there's been new references going up in the code for those games, for that game. I think uh, the biggest issue here is we're like, we're, we're doing the thing we do before like an E3 press conference. And even those are never like live up to like our hopes and dreams. No, 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 this not. is a fucking state of play. It's going to be like 20 minutes on some VR game that we don't <laughs> care. Well, that, hey, Brad. <laughs> This is E3 doesn't exist anymore. This is all we got. So this is what I'm. This is all. Yeah, this is, I don't think this is gonna be it, but we'll see. I'm just 15 saying. games. They, they, 15 games, 15 45 games. minutes. Okay. There's there's gonna be a couple bangers. I think there's also gonna be a few things that are like, eh. Yeah, there. I, I okay. believe so, it. I just think we already mentioned them. Uh, no, you're so, right. That's why I'm ready to move on. So Tsushima uh, two. Tsushima y- two. That's my guess. Okay. You you want to talk about a PSVR two game? 
there is a very strong rumor going around that 4A <laughs> Games is going to reveal a Metro, a Metro, a Metro VR game. Oh, that would be disappointing. That would be disappointing, <laughs> but and this so is a smaller to... project in uh, <laughs> in line with another major project that's in development. I, think I, I love how my, my reaction to that was, ooh, that sounds cool, and, but that's only because I have a PSP. <laughs> yeah, who do, well, who do you well, who do you think is more... Like, who do you think's more disappointed, the VR guys or the Metro guys? Like, <laughs> oh, I <laughs> so bad, but also I mean, true. Um, like, man, but you know, I, mean, I hope you get some VR games to play this year. I, I, do. Hope, I, I do. I mean, everyone's I desperate for a PSVR two game you, to play. No, no, no. Uh, let me just say, uh, <laughs> let me just say, I fully acknowledge that. Uh, that Horizon um, Call of the Mountain is the most expensive video game I've ever played in my life. <laughs> That's yeah. right. That's but not like, the most expensive game I've ever played. So wild. Dude, I, I, it's, it's just a matter, like, it's a matter of finding the time for it. I, I reinstalled Resident Evil 4 because I, I, I want to play that in VR. But again, we're the, I'll just go ahead and squeeze that in with the other with the 10 JRPGs, the Bioshock series, Baldur's Gate 3. And that's not even counting all the all the other games I'm playing at the same time. Should play okay. those on VR. Fuck. We right. should do. You you know, you want to hear some crazy shit? Is is <laughs> so fantasy critic right is one thing. Um, and then predictions are another thing, right? Uh, if uh, does anybody here listen to uh triple click? Anyways, they do this like predictions at the beginning of the year, and they kind of it's like a competition. They, they right. tally up the points at the end of the year. Um, so, <laughs> a couple. Of, I don't know if y'all are familiar with the Resties podcast. It's the bestie spinoff or whatever, but they decided to do a predictions fantasy critic where they drafted predictions. <laughs> what the fuck? And it was surprisingly like, huh, there's actually an idea there. And I'm like, we should draft predictions for oh. like Nick, right? Gosh. Like no. he's going to finish <laughs> Bioshock and all the DLC, but not even get to act three in Baldur's gate will be like a top pick. You know? what, what's going to be like his nostalgic vacation game for a month? But also, the Metro also series, he's going to replay the whole Metro gonna, series. Yeah, and then he's going to be tweeting stuff like, man, I really didn't give this series enough attention hey, when it came know, out. But but I haven't gone back and played it. This is truly a gem. Like, what hey, a great game. Uh, first of Nick, all, can you, you just go ahead and do that just for me? First of all, second of all, all, all the points. Fuck, First of all, and you, second of all. First of all, second of all, third of all, crispy. All three of those. <laughs> fuck you. Uh, but, uh, the other, the other part is you. You can't do that because that gives me agency over who wins and who loses. That's because true, I can just true. focus all you of my energy on 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 whoever drafts shit. You know what I mean? Like, oh, okay. let's rewatch. We'd obviously we do this watch. behind your back. Uh, <laughs> which two thousand show will new? I watched an episode of Smallville the other day. I'm not even gonna lie. No, I just I'd, I'd throw that out. crazy. Do you think you're like the like the last person to watch Smallville? No, dude, my on the dude, planet. I don't even know how or why, but mostly because Twitter makes zero sense anymore, and I don't know how the algorithm works. But like, my feed is being flooded with Smallville shit. <laughs> you're People got a tweeting. Bad feed, man. No, what? If, if, no, 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 no. If if y'all have been on Twitter lately. I, yeah. the, the the new thing is like the new meme is like hey who's got that clip right and they're just like who's got the sitcom clip and everyone's just posting clips from their favorite sitcoms or whatever and then all of a sudden i start seeing hey who's got that smallville clip and now my feed is just being flooded with clips from smallville oh and i was God. like oh no That's and then crazy, i went and watched and then i went and watched an episode of smallville. Alice and Mac, lots of Alice and Mac clips. Yeah. Oh, God. oh God, it's hard. To, oh God, uh, yeah, that's rough. Now I am probably gonna do a Buffy rewatch. What's video, Kristen Croak doing these days? Nothing. Oh no, actually, really? I take that back. What? She showed up in 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 the first season of Reacher. Oh my! God. Oh, there you go, Reacher. Mm-hmm. That show's pretty. Starring funny. Alan Richardson. Yep, the big dude. Yep, that big dude. Everybody big, likes. That, big, that big man. That no, big man, big yeah. Man. I really like the first season. The second season, I'm I'm enjoying, but it's eh, I'm not sure. I, I don't want not him sure. to be in a um. God, maybe he already has been. Jesus, a Fast and the Furious. No, um, he hasn't been movie where he fights Vin Diesel. Because <laughs> wait, what's <laughs> the difference Diesel's between that, watching that and watching The Rock fight Vin Diesel? It's like the... well, The Rock is like appropriately sized. Vin Diesel is just like you know. 
you know, he he's always acting above his weight punching, class. Acting. Punching up, like punching, punching above his weight class. <laughs> literally punching up. <laughs> That's you funny. Um, it was it was silly watching him fight the Rock. Like it was absurd. Yeah, <laughs> it kind of was. Um, anyways, I don't know how we got in this conversation, I but um, can I throw oh, he's one? In Fast X. He is in a Fast and the Furious movie. He is Alan yeah. Richardson. Well, Carl just said it. Are you fucking serious? Yeah, he's in Fast, Fast 10. Oh, that's fucking hilarious. I oh, mean, I was, haven't. He was in that live action Titans show, too. He was also in Smallville. <laughs> Wait, the one with Nick, Buck you Batman? should watch Nick. Alan you Richardson should watch is... Titans. It's it's basically like Smallville. Alan Richardson is uh, Aquaman in, in Smallville. He's oh. Hawk in Titans. <laughs> He's Aquaman. Aquaman is in small. What? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Dude, they, dude, are you kidding me? It's, they do the whole. Yeah, they do. It was like a whole they thing. They do the Justice League in in uh, in Smallville minus Batman. No, it was bad. like what? yeah, it was like they had Aquaman, Green Arrow, mm-hmm. uh, Superman, and a few uh, others. I can't remember. Cyborg? Did they do an early yeah, cyborg? cyborg? They did Cyborg. Yeah. Yeah. No Wonder Woman. Um, no Wonder Woman. No. Yeah. No girls okay. allowed. No. <laughs> Fuck it, hey. All right. You know, I used to think that. My, and you know, so like, goals. hey, I've been playing Tekken, and Tekken. Can we just transition? No, we we have to. T- we're gonna hey. get to a break in a minute, and Let's, we're do- we're clearly oh. at this point doing impressions in the second segment. Can we just gotcha. squeeze one more little conversation in before we do it, so we can just do impressions in four player minute I've... in the back half? Okay. I've got the one last thing we can do for the state of play. Is okay. it time for us to see the new game from Housemark? Oh, no, sure. it's too. Maybe oh, I guess it has been Not a new game. We're it coming up on game. three years past Returnal. Sure, sure. I wouldn't put it past him, but let's let's Is not get too greedy here. Game or a smaller game? Let's or? not get too greedy here because I feel like a lot of the stuff we've talked about is pretty realistic, and now we're just starting to throw shit out for no reason. And I, that's, now I'm just going to be He's disappointed. He's got a good like, point. World I mean, Teller and Chase like Fumito Ueda's like, new game, and I'm like, stop it! Everybody, just fucking stop it! That is not happening. <laughs> I mean, I want it to. Of course, I want it to, but it's not happening. I mean, you where's really the new know. Astrobot game? Like, where the fuck is I, that? I, that. Dude, there probably should be a new Astrobot game. They and, literally and... closed down all of their. They closed down Japan Studio, and the only thing that th- that survived was the Astrobot team. So, like, I would hope they'd be working on something. Hey, you know what? That we're going to see fact soon. that they even mentioned PSVR two mm-hmm. in the promotion for the State of Play makes me wonder <laughs> if they are planning to finally show Astrobot two for the for the PSVR two because that would actually do something. That would actually do something to move the needle for PSVR two. I think um, not a lot. It's not, not going to move the needle, but it will make people who own it happy, which is I'm all for. All right. Um. You know, maybe they can make a version. Maybe they can make an Astrobot game that is like that can be played on ps5 or psvr2 you know what i mean like like you can play like kind of like resident Evil 4 you can play it in psv in vr or you can play it out of vr and be just fine like that would be a fucking just, game changer i just feel like decisions designed to make customers who bought psvr2 happy are not like good business decisions. no of course not <laughs> but i mean like but like independent of that everybody wants a new astrobot i would feel bad I would feel bad as a PSVR 2 owner if they make an Astrobot game and I'm one of the only people in the world that gets to play it. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Oh, oh, boy, you'd love that, Nick. You would love it. You'd be sitting up there on your high horse like, ha who's an idiot now? <laughs> like... I mean, at least a day. For at least well, a day, Nick, surely would. you would let us borrow the PSVR 2 so we could play it too, right? Oh, yeah, sure, sure. Everyone's coming to Nick now because Nick's the only one in town with a PSVR 2. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Okay. Um, real quick. This could have been a longer conversation. Perhaps it should be, but I want to see how if we can make it quick because, like I said earlier, it's been a terrible week for the gaming industry. And I, I, I want to obviously talk about the fact that uh, on one hand, we have just shit tons of layoffs hitting the industry simultaneously, right? And then at the seemingly at the same time, we have embracer groups 
continued reign of terror. Um, just ha- having a direct impact on layoffs for, on one hand, closing studios, but also canceling games that we've also, that a lot of us have kind of known for a while are happening, even if unofficially, right? Games that uh, you think was, that no matter what are fucking safe. Like, they would definitely want to put this out. Yes. So, Embracer Group's cont- Reign of Terror continued this week. They canceled a game, a Deus Ex game that was in development for two years. Mm. Canned it. Um, which makes me very scared for, like, Tomb Raider and uh, any number of other games that are that are currently in development that, like Chris Davis said, are I assumed were kind of... Sh- shoe-ins right that were safe uh clearly not the case um well i don't think Deus no studio is ever like a sure thing right after that last game true and I, I do but... want to make sure I, I do want to point this out because the i think a lot of people when this news hit i mean there's you know independent of which deus ex game you may have played there's a lot of industry fervor for deus ex is just kind of like a sure. as a franchise but I think a lot of people kind of went straight to, oh my God, we're never going to see the end of Adam Jensen's story. The the voice actor for Adam Jensen came out and said, the fact that nobody has reached out to me to talk to me about a new Deus Ex game after it's been in development for two years makes me pretty confident that it wasn't going to be an Adam Jensen Deus Ex game. So if Probably that was some of, VR game. So if that was at all part of your disappointment or concern, uh, maybe just take that out. Uh, obviously, independent of that, it's it's fucking awful news. Um, yeah. uh, remind me, did this cancellation this cancellation also came with a bunch of layoffs at that studio, right? Yes. Yeah. So a bunch mm. of people at the studio were laid off. I'm and the the main project they were working on obviously canceled. Now it makes me wonder, like, if you're going to cancel the main project in a studio in a game like Deus Ex and lay off a bunch of people and leave only a fraction of the of the team in place, like, what the fuck? Like what? Do you, what do you even accomplish doing that? And I guess unless they're gonna shift them towards other projects to like help co-develop other projects, maybe. Yeah. What do you mean? I mean, Embracer just has they didn't get their Saudi money, and now they can't afford to do anything. So that's why I mean, all it makes this me. Is it makes me wonder. I mean, it makes me. It makes me wonder. Like, if Day X has, Day X, Deus X isn't safe, I'm like, I'm wondering what. I think the only things that are safe are games that are already in the release pipeline and due to come out in the next six months. Anything else I think is in danger. And that's yeah, frightening. No. Uh, they axed time splitters and the dead and, and we talked about that already. That happened a while ago, didn't it? Yeah. yeah. That, yeah. that time splitters project from what they were describing sounds Still like disappointing. Very oh, disappointing. Yeah, of course. Obviously very disappointing. I mean, obviously and there were layoffs. I mean, this is independent of Embracer, but you want to talk about it disappointing too. There was a fuck ton of layoffs at Activision Blizzard uh, this week as well. There was a yeah nineteen hundred nineteen after after they yeah after they were all like this uh, Microsoft acquisition isn't going to lead to layoffs and then boom. Yep, they're there. Well, Look, guys, the whole conversation is about Embracer and Microsoft. Which let me tell you, mergers and acquisitions do not lead to, uh, yeah. you know, people keeping jobs, and sustainability or whatever. Fucking awful. Um, it's it's fucking terrible. Also, I'm gonna be honest. As someone who doesn't really follow League of Legends in any significant way, I was really surprised by the number of people laid off at Riot. At Riot, yeah. Dude, they were like, we la-, like the the headline that was I saw. Wild. Was, the, the, like the headline I saw was like, we've laid off, I forgot what the exact number was, but it's like, we've laid off 10% of our work, of our workforce. I was like, Oh shit, 10%. Like how many is that? Like 50 people. It was like, Oh, 1500 yeah. people. Yeah. Right. I was like, they, they worked on much more than just league of legends. I know, I know, I know, I know. Over so, I mean, 500 employees. I'm just saying as someone who doesn't follow riot is not, is not, like, I don't play league of legends. I don't, I haven't really played anything that riot has done. I don't pay a lot of attention to that studio and I knew they were big. I obviously know they're a huge studio, but like no, even knowing that I was not prepared for that number. I was like, how the fuck do you lay off that many people? And it's still only like 10%. It's, of it's 11% company. of their company and it's okay. 500, 530 employees. That yeah. okay. So I got the numbers wrong a little bit, but still like, that's close. crazy. That's yeah. fucking nuts. Um, Cause like to me, a huge studio is like, 
and they sound, close... to me, like, like 500 people sounds like a huge studio. I know that in these days that's probably not the standard anymore, but uh, I was just I was just like, God damn. So, yeah, it's been a really oh, terrible new, shitty week. Sega of America is laying off um, 61 employees effective March 8th. Yeah, just, at, at, their, at their HQ specifically. Hmm. Hmm. It's just so shitty because, like, no one at the top ever fucking, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously it's laid it's, off. It's, no, they. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No. It's, it's just it's wonderful like, severance packages, golden uh, parachutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, uh, uh, capitalism, right? Yep. It's fucking awful. How do you um, make art in an environment like this? You I don't, don't know, but like you don't. It's it's one of those situations, especially with the embracer thing. That's like op- shit's obviously going to get worse before it gets better. Um, and it's like it's it's fucking awful to think about. But it's like what it, it's like. We, we all we can really do at this point is just sit back and just watch this dumpster fire fizzle out. And who knows how many people are going to lose their job before things start you know evening out and getting better like i mean and getting better is even a relative term like what the fuck does that even mean um i don't know i just feel like it's it's going to be the beginning of 2024 is going to is dark times for the industry yeah. and i i hope i hope we can start to see things change a little bit in the not too distant future but i mean the the unfortunate thing the unfortunate fact is that a lot of these people got hired on at the beginning of the pandemic when mm-hmm. people were staying home, they had the income oh. and they wanted to spend it on something. And so a lot of them spent it on video games. So oh. developers and publishers saw an opportunity. They built up their teams. And then when the sales returns from their games, that they spent years developing just weren't there. They'd rather just fucking call people than just continue on and try to make something smaller, more profitable. But, you know, the worst thing I saw and, you know, obviously following a lot of people on social media that work in the industry and stuff and just seeing the number of people who were like, perhaps the worst thing about this. And this is not just a one off. I saw several people talking about similar situations are like I moved like less than six months ago. I moved my entire family across the country. Yeah to work because they because the company did not want to let people work from home anymore. Yeah. And they moved their 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 families across the country, started their job and within 6 months they were laid off. And I'm like, I can't even fathom how fucked up that is. Like it's just one of those things like the post pandemic world is now is is a world in which people in a lot of industries can work from home. And I feel like until the industry gets on board with that, like this shit's just going to be I know. Shit so. Anyways, yeah. Anyways, I think, you know, there's not a whole lot we can say that's going to, like, add anything to this conversation, so we can move on. I just wanted to acknowledge it because it's been a terrible week in that sense. So let's take a quick break. When we come back, we'll shift gears a little bit and talk about the games we are playing, including Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown, and Tekken 8. And then, of course, we'll wrap up with the the four-player minute. So if you're watching us live, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. We have no time for shenanigans tonight. Let's get right to it. Let's talk about video games, the ones that we're playing right now. Let's oh start with Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown. Uh, like I said, we did not record last week, and I'm kind of glad we didn't because I I wouldn't have had a lot to say about it last week. I am now like 16 hours deep into this game. Um, and damn, it's pretty impressive. Brad, are you playing this as well, by the way? I am playing it, and I agree. It is it is pretty damn impressive, uh, especially for you know a series that I think a lot of people have. I want to say people people haven't written. I think a lot of people have been itching for a, uh, a, a, a what's the word a rebirth or I suppose of Prince of Persia for a long time. And I think I think a lot of people assumed we were getting kind of this half measure when they saw this game for the first time because it's like oh they're going back to two D you know they're you know they were kind of hoping for more of like a sands of time kind of game. And this is obviously not that, um, but what not we an ended indie up... game. 
<laughs> sure. I, you know, I, I, I think a lot of, I think we are pretty good at recognizing the value in a game like this, obviously, but I don't think that's necessarily the, uh, the, the, the general reaction from people who play games as a whole, but like the, the reception of this has been pretty phenomenal. And, um, yeah, because it's fucking good. Like, if it wasn't it fucking expensive. good, then it'd be kind of a bummer. But it's yeah. fucking good. What, what it is happening. <laughs> no, but I'm saying, like, if, if it was just, like, a Blasphemous 2, like, oh. Oh, okay. this is pretty good. <laughs> what is no, this? Okay, okay. That is was this? a low blow. That was a low blow. But what I'm saying is, like, if it was, if it, I'm saying, like, if it was, like, kind of where asshole. most Metroid, uh, indie Metroid, we get, like, dozens of indie Metroidvanias sure. every fucking year. And if it was just, like, a Prince of Persia game, but also just kind of an, you know, an 81 feeling, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, yeah, okay, like a, do, or whatever. a Metroidvania light kind of thing. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? But, like, no, this is, this is meaty and it is fucking good like it plays really good like combat's it good platforming's sick. good progression is good like this is a good ass video game and if it was just kind of like okay it would be a bummer right because prince of persia has been gone for a long time and you know Can God I ask damn a it, right? about that? but like this is i mean it's fucking good it, and so here, what, here's the thing it is fucking good Sorry, go ahead, Crispy. What were you gonna ask? Oh, I, I was gonna. I I remember Brad the other day talking about something in Discord. I don't remember if it was this. Oh, was this was this the one you oh. were saying was kind of boring? Oh Jesus Christ! What was I that? Ten minutes of that demo, and people oh, seem to think that's that that's what like, it was. They, okay. they really latched that's onto that, was. like like. I, I just remember that being a big discussion. I wasn't. I wasn't. No, it wasn't. It wasn't to a big take discussion. a. <laughs> It was it was something I said, and then people really latched on to it. I will say this um, in relation to that. How, any demos slightly boring to me because it's sure. not a fucking video game. I can keep sure, playing. Sure. But also, like, um, six, let me tell you, at the start of this game, there's a lot of talking, and I was also bored at the start of this game, um, just as I was in that fucking demo. But then I kept playing and playing and playing, and as a is, video game, it's so fucking the, good. I the think story stuff kind of lame. No, actually, it's not it's bad, okay. uh, it's and okay. I, th I think it's getting more I don't, weak point. Well, here's yeah. the th here's the thing. I think that's where the most of the budget shows in the game because, like, a lot of the way the story is presented is kind of just like you know the little, the hand drawn character art comes out, and then they you there's some voice acting over it or whatever, and uh, and some of the cutscenes are, are you know are, they're few and far between. Like when they get like actual like action type cutscenes, but you know they're pretty good when they when they happen. It's definitely not the focus. And to Brad's point about being bored in the demo and being bored at the beginning of this game, I do think even as a Metroidvania, which it very clearly is, uh, I think it takes a lot, a, quite a while for this game to for like the true magic of this game to really kind of sink in. Yeah. Like I was probably mm -hmm. like six or seven hours into it before before I really started doing things that are not just things that you do in every other Metroidvania, yeah. and it eventually gets to that point. Like so, shit so, starts to get so wild. I I will say, like, immediately it feels like something. It's like, you know, when you first play Dread for the first time, right? And you're like, yeah. oh, this feels, like, fast and snappy. And, like, this feels good to play. Say what you will about, you know, uh, maybe other issues that that game had. But, like, it it felt really good to play. And this immediately has that. It's like, oh, we're, we're, we're doing they figured something out which is good right i i feel like uh you know one of the reasons i counterpicked that game ultros on your list is yeah. because like it seemed really slow and clunky and okay yeah indie metroidvania i've played these this indie is metroidvania with a cool art style i get it yeah like, like it, it and it's the i think i think it's something we really take for granted but like really good quick responsive controls like really getting the speed right in a game can like make things feel so different i noticed it when i played like a little bit of chained echoes like so many indie jrpgs are just like clunky and slow and like chained echoes fucking moved when you hit that stick it moved and i'm like we take that shit for granted too much it is like a, a really amazing thing and here this is the kind of shit that this game really gets right and and then it extends like and that's just basic movement but then you do more of the combat and you do more of the platforming and you're like okay like this this shit matters and and i'm seeing it in all aspects of this game now um 
And let me tell you, like some of the I like one little, I, yeah. I was just saying, I did, like like some of like the later, and I, I say late game. My thing says I'm at fifty percent completion at sixteen hours. Take that how you will, but like 50? even today, like fifteen or fifty percent. I'm sorry, I'm at fifty percent at fifteen hours of gameplay. Okay, okay. Six, fifteen to sixteen hours of yeah. gameplay. Uh, so take that how you will. But like today, I was playing a little bit before the podcast, and I was doing a platforming sequence that was like it's one of those things where it's like okay. T- that you have to like do this chain it was like kind of like guacamelee level right where you have to do this like chain where you basically don't touch the floor and you can't really see what's coming so you just kind of have to react and it's like when you actually finally successfully string everything together it it's like a 30 to 45 second platforming sequence <laughs> and but like because the controls feel so snappy because it, you, everything feels so reactive and good like I never got frustrated with it, uh, even though it took me a few tries. And uh, but when you're actually when you're when you're landing these things and making these like split second decisions, like some of these platforming sequences look like they should be incredibly complicated and hard to navigate. But since it controls so well, it's really not. Like you can do so much, and it looks so complicated. It's just, it's just super fucking impressive. And they yeah. even work some of that stuff into boss fights. It's it's yeah. crazy. The boss fights are good too. In the con, like the any random enemy you come across can be quite deadly. Like I'm surprised, you know. I, I I'm always worried that you know games that are like very progression based, like a Metroidvania is, is not like hard enough to really push the player. Like I hate when they're not, when an RPG or like a Metroidvania is not hard enough to like really push the player to really kind of you know, him and haul over the decisions they're making. Like, you know, like you are, you do with your, uh, you know, like your, what do they call them in this one? Like your hollow Knight uh, medallions or whatever. Right. Yeah. Like the, the things you equip that you only have so many that you can equip and mm-hmm. you're like, Hmm, how should I build this character? Right. Like the, fa- the fact game? that like the combat and stuff is pushing back hard enough to where I'm like really kind of thinking about character. those decisions is again, another thing that is, pretty impressive that the game does right so, you know you get you get good fucking abilities and shit too like it's what what are the kind of like abilities you're playing around with so there's there's one you can see in this footage where you actually like you create like a copy of yourself it stays static wherever you are you hit the button and it creates like a shadow of yourself and then the next time you tap the shoulder button it'll suck you to that point so like and you'll go through objects so like yeah. like there'll be like a in this in the footage you're watching there's this like chain there's this like spiked block that goes left to right and you're yeah so as it goes left you run towards it and then you create the copy of yourself and then run back and then as soon as it comes back towards you once it passes over that that copy you tap the shoulder button and then it sucks you to it and suddenly you're on the other side of it and you can run i hope that kind of makes sense but you can yeah. use that in combat in really interesting ways like and fact, some boss fights force you to like you like there's there's really no way to like you have to use that to dodge certain attacks they also have kind of the uh the thing where it's like the the positive negative or the red light blue light stuff that they did in um what was the name of that game there was a metrovania a long time ago that i really liked that that where you like had to tap a button game uh outlet outland outlast or outland yeah outland where it's like you tap the button and all the blue blocks turn red or whatever but you can only jump on the blue block blocks so you mm-hmm. have to like in midair, you have to swap out switch the colors them. and yeah. switch them and stuff. They do that, and uh, and there's there's just a bunch of stuff and like and just like environmental yeah. stuff too that they introduce is really interesting and and the obstacles are are just like I said tuned enough to where like you feel like the game's pushing you platforming combat wise to where you know like, it, it all feels really good. The I mean, timing Nick, you're really bombing this one though. What's I know I, just, yeah, I fucked this one up. I fucked this one up really bad. Uh, but like the timing yeah. is funny because I just I randomly picked this up this time to start playing Celeste, and I'm not saying this is like Celeste because Celeste I've died over 500 times Celeste in a single level in Celeste. Brutal, but yeah, like, sure. but just in terms of like that addiction of like because it reloads really quickly. It's so oh, like what, cool. like that mm-hmm. sequence in particular. You just watched me fail like 18 times in a row, like. It's so snappy, and I'm just like, oh my god, this like fuck. I know what I got to do, and it just it hooks you. Like I don't get frustrated; I just get determined, and I feel like that's a sign of just a really good feeling game and well controlling game. So, man, you know, if I had to point, if I had to say two things about this game that I think are not necessarily negative, but maybe slight, just 
criticisms, rooms I guess. Rooms for improvement? Not even rooms for improvement. I, I will say this. I While I don't think this game looks bad by any means, I think it has, I think it looks really nice. Uh, I don't think the art style really does much for me. Take that however you will. I don't know. It, it looks good. It looks fine. Um, but it, you know how some Metroidvanias really lean on like kind of their visual style as like a, yeah. like this, I think they were trying to do that and I don't necessarily think it's anything special. Yeah. But I mean, at it the same time, it also that. does, you could tell it has a bigger budget, right? Than your, your average indie Metroidvania. So maybe the art style is not like unique or anything, which, you know, in the indie space, you kind of have to rely on that to even get noticed because it's so yeah. like competitive out there. But here, you know, it's doing like the, you know, like some of the more cinematic stuff it's doing in like boss fights and whatnot. Like the right. things that it cuts to is, is sort of like, a, you know, and, bigger, and don't get uh, me wrong. I think there are, I think there are environments in this game that I think are like moments where I'm like, oh, this is actually pretty nice looking. But like, I'd say like 70 to 80% of the time, I'm just like, you know, it looks so, it looks fine. Would, right? would, would you, um, would you say that, um this game probably has a lot more polish than what you would have expected because yeah, i'm thinking sure. i'm thinking about just like this game coming out and the prince of persia sands of time remake that was completely rebooted and mm. delayed all to hell like do you think they just reappropriated some funds to clean this no. up and say hey uh, this is our big prince this, of persia is, game? this is the fucking rayman team like like they're good at making fucking video games you know right? i did not know that it's funny you mentioned the Rayman team, right? Because Rayman is a series that's especially, you know, the, the kind of the recent generation Rayman games, especially like those are known for being like fucking sexy looking video games, right? Well, and they're um, also just really good. And they are really good. I'm not, I'm, yeah, I'm just specifically speaking to like the visual style because it's, it, it just kind of makes me a little sad again about the way you the don't game think this game up. looks good. No, I, I think it looks good. kind of sick. Like, no, like, no, no. Like, this is what I'm trying to say. Like, I, I think it looks fine. I just, and especially in, I think there are just moments where, especially in like when you what when you're like watching cutscenes or like characters are talking to each other, or like I'm in a room with like there's enemies That's shooting cool. at me, and I'm just like, it just looks kind of, it just, I don't know how to. It's just some there are there are it's moments. A me, it's a it's a 2.5D Metroidvania that's using like realistic people instead of hyper stylized yeah, I, I, cartoons it's, like, it's a well, genre it's a yeah. genre that has kind of become synonymous with having really artistic i guess like i think you're spoiled you know, i think i think you're i think your brain's fried spoiled. a little of course bit we're spoiled. i, I mean, think your brain's just fried a little bit man <laughs> like, uh, so so i i have i have a um a pet like a thing that's bothering me about this game that is really annoying um but it is less uh there's much less conversation i think but it bothers me it feels good to move in this game, to run fast, to sprint. When you enter a new room, it kills your run. And oh, you start yeah. again from the ground. So you can't jump or run into another screen. You're always on your feet mm -hmm. and you're always not running. And that all to me, it's like a sin. Like, what are you doing? Right? Like think about again, Metroid dread, right? Like you, you never lost that momentum. And in fact, there was a lot of like cool platforming puzzles that involved like running, like across like distant parts of the map to like do shine spark puzzles and stuff, right? Uh, platforming challenges. And to me, it just, it feels gross. For a game that feels so good, it feels gross every time I enter a room. You know, I'm like, oh, you were so close. Just patch this or something. What did you do? Um, yeah, but yeah, right. that's a small thing. <laughs> it's a gripe. It's a small gripe. Um, there was one other thing I was going to mention. It must not have been that important because I think I'm already... Well, I mean, I I mean, I'm getting it. I, I kind of don't really care about the story or anything, but no, no, no. You know, no. It, I mean, it, I, it's it's like serviceable. I mean, I don't care about the story in most. I mean, it's it's no like. How far are you in this game, by the way, Brad? So I mean, you're further than me. I mean, I I at least have the ability where you can you know make a copy of yourself, right? Mm -hmm. And right. So you know, I've played a healthy amount, but they're uh, alluding to some cool stuff story wise, like kind of because like you're in this place where time doesn't seem to work. I mean, it's a Prince of Persia game, right? So that kind of makes sense, but it's like the character is not privy to what's going on or like, and it doesn't expressly tell you what's going on, but you're meeting, you're like meeting characters that are like, you're, you talk to a character and then you go a little bit and you, you find this kid and then you're talking to the kid and you're like, wait a second, this kid is that character I was just talking to. It's just at a different point in his life. And he's oh, like, what the yeah. fuck is going on? Like, it's just, you know, cool. 
it's it's cool like some of that stuff is pretty cool i don't know where it's going yet but you know the, that's, not the, that's not the super important part i suppose i feel bad for this game right because i do think silk song is going to come out this year and, and just kind of like and this is the january game and you know i think we're going to remember it right because this is it is like I said, people are going to forget this about is it not in December. just your garden variety metroidvania this i think this one kind of is rising above a little bit right and I think we will remember it, but Silk Song is also like, you know, it's the guy, right? Like it's the one. And, you know, I am thinking about like, oh, I don't really care about like the characters or whatever, but like, I know I'm going to care about them in Silk Song. And it, it just, it's, un, you know, like I see like there's this character who's like your map person, right? Who always sells you the map. And I'm like, well, this is neat, I guess. But like, man it's not the it's not the, the it's not map it's dude. not silk song it's not yeah. silk song it's unfair but you know it's good that this game came out before silk song but i mean it's yeah. better than that i mean it, it 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 really does like i think this game is remarkable to me it's not it, like chris davis said something about like oh i'm surprised it's so polished i was i was always expecting like a i was never not expecting a polished game from from this team or this developer i am shocked by just how competent like how more than competent it is like how it really is some of the best combat i've seen in a metroidvania and like some of the best platforming like this is this is i mean honestly it's in conversation with like the best in the genre now i gotta be honest with you granted i have not finished it um i think it's only but, it's only getting better it's not like it's it's one of those games like that is just the more you play it, the better it gets. I have not once felt like, okay, I'm not like, we need to wrap this up. Like I'm 16 hours in and it's still introducing new shit. And I'm like, and it says I'm 50% of the way through the game. And I'm like, how, how is there 50? Like, how have I only seen 50% of what this game has to offer? I don't, I don't know. It's It's a big game. Uh, yeah. I just had no idea. This was Montpellier. Yep. I wait. Is it? Is that the studio? Yeah. Yep. Well, you know, I'll just say it's pretty fucking good. <laughs> it's a pretty fucking good. Game. This is the game that Ed drafted and then Nolan counterpicked, so it kind of fucked him a little bit. Yeah, it uh, was the one where like when when Nolan counterpicked it, everyone got the the ones who knew knew. We got real quiet because we're like, ooh, that's a bad counterpick. <laughs> the, the preview buzz for this game was very positive. Um, yeah, but you know, yeah. not everybody was really paying attention. But also, again, I think we I think most of us at least I think most of us, if not all of us, have at least one game on our list on our draft or on our league that we we know is probably going to fuck us a little bit. Counterpicking was a bloodbath this year. Like it was going to like get our asses beat, Um, Uh, which is for me, except for. Well, that's true. Crispy did pick some like potential no ships, which would be huge. Right. But like, remember, Carlos picked. Alan Wake to counterpick Alan Wake too because he thought that was going to be a no ship and he lost 18, 19 points on that. So yeah. you never know. Y'all are Actually, so fucked Crispy's when they announce strong. Metroid Prime 4. Yeah. God. Yeah, when they announce it and then it comes out this year for sure. <laughs> for yeah, sure, I mean, Chris I, Davis. I for sure. Do Not, don't forget my about my Donkey Kong <laughs> game. Yeah, I just feel good because Jeff Grubb, so Giant Bomb did also Fantasy Critic for the first time this year. Uh-huh. And um, Jeff Grubb drafted an unannounced 3D Mario game. Yeah. Oh. I felt good about that. I felt good. I was like, well, I mean, he probably doesn't know anything, but if anyone's probably going to know anything, it might be him. So I feel good about that. <laughs> All right. So let's, let's, uh, let's shift gears. Brad, you wanted to talk about your time with Tekken. New oh, tech yeah. game. oh yeah. certified so sitting... 90 Tekken? Oh yeah, Tekken. Yeah, yeah. Maybe right. Yeah. <laughs> this is a good pickup. Yeah. Funny, it's doing so work for me. Two years in a row, he opened his his fantasy critic. Uh, were you last place both times? Too? Yes. He opened. Yes, I was. His fantasy draft by picking like the hot new fighting game. That motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like next year you have to pick a pick up a fighting game. Chris is nothing if not predictable. Uh, well, dude, right? I mean, after like like Street Fighter was one of my good ones, and Tekken now is looking like one of my good ones. So I might have to. I yeah, I, might. I drafted Tekken last year. Uh, yeah, well, it's I was so mad when it. Same. Wow. Fighting games are not are clearly not giving you the same. Well, actually, I say that I take that back. You did you did will Mortal oh, Kombat one. Yeah, but Mortal Kombat's not a fighting game. 
So, damn, yeah. damn. damn, damn. The it's anger. All it's a, it's, it's a, a beat. Relative. It's a beat. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, we're talking about prestige fighting games over here, Chris Davis. Yeah, like TV actual wow. franchises. You know, the ones people like compete in and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Somewhere out there, Ed Boon is shedding a single tear. Not not yeah, for games for babies. He's he's like the Woody Harrelson gif where he's wiping away his wipe it with all his money. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all that Warner Brothers blood money. <laughs> Alright, so the new Tekken game. Um let me tell you. So it's got a lot in it. And I th- I think man. Actually, I took notes, actually. So, you know, I'm a longtime Tekken fan. You know, it's a series I always, you know, I don't play as much these days, obviously, because I'm just an old man with a family now. But, you know, back in the day, I this was, I mean, Tekken Tag Tournament is probably one of my most played games of all time. And that was like most of that time was in the arcades, right? Um, it was. I just, remember many a conversation on these podcasts back in the early yeah. days, back in the... Uh, when we were in the teens, as far as episodes go. Yeah, I mean, I just, I've just Tekken. been a, a super fan, honestly, since mm-hmm. I got that demo disc on PlayStation 1 that had the Tekken 2 demo. I've just been like, I was blown away back then, and I never let, I never let go. Um, Jack, it's funny. Never let go, it's funny. Jack. Tekken 2, actually, is uh, part of this conversation because, and I think on the footage you're watching some of the story mode. So the, so they kind of went all out for the story mode this time. Um which they were they were doing some of this last time, but uh, in Tekken Seven, but they kind of had some like presentation issues, really. With like they got Brian bad, like, Cox to do a seven minute video about the history of the Tekken franchise story. That shit like, was low key brilliant marketing. That yeah, was brilliant. excellent. Cox. Yeah. Oh my god, watch it! It's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, it's big succession vibes because that's the story of Tekken, right? Is this family just killing each other? Um, <laughs> we're trying to kill each other. Yeah, it's really, really smart, actually. Yeah. And uh, wait, is that the story <laughs> of Tekken? Yeah, dude. It's yeah, just, it's it's back and forth you know, trying to kill one another. Literally, the story starts with Heihachi throwing his his like child son and off a cliff because <laughs> you know it's not. Yeah, yeah, and then you know Heihachi. I mean, K- Kazuya Mishima wins that tournament and then throws Heihachi off a cliff and then like later on they're throwing people into volcanoes it's just like <laughs> and and there's yet another mishima in this game right there's always like some bastard child it is very like you know there's you know, hey, 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 he got around he was having hey, a lot of fun in this so are all youth. the characters in tekken all the fighting characters in tekken they're all related no 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 no, no but like no. the main the main characters are right like like, like the, the main characters of this series are kazuya mishima his dad heihachi mishima and then kazuya's son uh jin kazama and he goes by kazama his mother's name because he kind of doesn't he won't take his father's name right because his father's like you know the head of the Mishima Zabatsu. He's a he's the evil. He's a bad guy, and he's got the devil inside of him. But Jin has a little bit of the devil too. And the stories are always about that devil coming out. But now his mom's back in this one. She was long thought dead since Tekken Two. She's back to to. Uh, I mean, I'm not far in the story. I don't know where it goes. Um, but she's gonna she's gonna save Jin from becoming a full devil like his father. They're literally they're like super Saiyans, but instead of going super Saiyan, they go like devil. <laughs> <laughs> and, i have and, um, never wanted to play a tekken game more in my life than i do right it's now no it's it is so <laughs> fucking bonkers and i'm like i'm in a part in the story where like some pretty like whatever stuff is happening actually there's a tournament going on and a new mishima shows up it's this girl reina and and she and she's fighting Jin and, and you're Jin for i guess most of the story at least this part of the story which is tough for me because i don't play Jin at all and i'm not good with Jin and the, the story is very cinematic kind of like mortal Kombat, where it's like cutting between like cutscene and store and, and a fight and stuff so you're always on the left side you know in any other mode i can choose to start on the right side and i'm like terrible playing a mishima on the left side um i i say that because it's kind of like they all have this fighting style uh, think of it like a like a shoto and street fighter right you know like a like a ken and ryu right where where a dragon punch is a very big part of that move set, right? And some people don't like doing that motion, if you will. Think of a Mishima fighting style, something kind of like that. And I suck on doing it on the left side and yada, yada, yada. Anyways, uh, there's this new girl and she's fighting Jen and Jen notices immediately like, what the fuck? She's using the Mishima fighting style. 
um and then all of a sudden you know heihachi just had another you i guess you find out he had another bastard daughter granddaughter i don't know but he's she's straight up using heihachi moves who he's dead uh, uh he died in the last one um or did he right he died, died in smash brothers <laughs> or did he <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah um it, like she's either was trained by Heihachi, she's clearly related to Heihachi, or has the spirit of Heihachi in her. I don't know, but she's fucking badass. But because she's like all the ladies that have like used like kind of the Kaz- the Kazama <laughs> fighting style, it's never like the Mishima wave dash like crazy like like electric when God fist style fighting style. But she has it. She has like the brutal crazy animations of like Heihachi, which is actually kind of nice for this series because you know the ladies in this series don't get the really powerful looking badass moves all the time. You know, they're, they're, that's unfortunate. A lot of the ladies are like the quick characters, you know, that's just sort of like a fighting game trope, right? Um, that Tekken is, you know, just like a lot of other fighting game franchise series over the years have, they've gotten better at, I guess, right. Where there's more, um, you know, Tank, you know tankish, like now, now Street Fighter Six is like biggest. Marissa is like the biggest, strongest fucking character in that game, and she's a lady, right? Like I'm saying, like back in the day, you didn't really see that much. And with Tekken, it's nice to see like a character who you know has the Heihachi like fucking headbutt or whatever. Is this? Is this? I mean, I don't know. She's just really cool, um, and I want to use her because she's really cool. She looks cool and her animations are cool. Like you could tell they spent more money on her animations because she's like a family member. You know what I mean? As opposed to some of the other new characters who they don't spend as much money on, I guess. Although Azucena is a Peruvian dancer who always talks about coffee. I guess they don't know much about I'm listening. people from Peru. They just knew know that coffee, coffee, comes, coffee comes from comes Peru. Peru. <laughs> so literally all she talks about is coffee and like every interaction with another it's character. The only in the story cultural touch point they had to go is, <laughs> is, um, <laughs> is she's like, Hey, what kind of drink do you like? And you know, Lee, Lee, Lee is like, oh, I like tea. And then they like fight about it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's really stupid, but she's cool. And I don't know how to use her. I, I think I'm playing a little bit of her in this footage, but, um, She's like, she's like, does all these crazy dance moves and has all these crazy like dance dances, but I don't really know what I'm doing. Um, and I do, I, I do think I exit the story here and switch to like the arcade, uh, what is it called? Arcade quest where you play as like a little avatar running around like little arcades, getting into fights. And, you know, you do that in like the online mode, a lot of, um, fighting games these days have like online modes where you're kind of like in a virtual arcade and kind of going up to people at cabinets to oh like god, actually like fight a, them. oh my god but they created it's a like whole the single Wii player Shop channel what is yeah yeah exactly <laughs> exactly i mean Did you're this hor- horrifying looking little avatar honestly and you know you can unlock all kinds of like customization but i'm like i don't care dude this thing is lame i want to unlock customization for my actual characters which is in the game of course been in tekken since tekken 5 and it's here too and as cool as ever but um but like they created this whole little uh single player mode where you're doing this arcade quest and you're kind of going around there's all kinds of like challenges and stuff and it's really just kind of teaching you the ins and outs of the game which is nice because like tekken is like probably up there is like maybe like one of the most complicated like fighting games out there like the move lists in a tekken game will put like most other fighting games to shame it's absurd right and it, it's a very intimidating series very hard to get into you know they have this thing called the korean backdash which you know koreans invented you know decades ago in tech and i think when tag came out or three came out actually that's like such a complicated like physically hard to do movement like on a joystick um and if you look at like top level play, everyone's doing it, but it's the kind of thing where like I try to do it and it's like, that's okay, the barrier well, to entry right I there. I guess I'll never win a tech and tournament Filters. because that is insane. <laughs> it requires so much like constant dexterity. dexterity out of the player and precision that it's like, geez, it's a lot. This is a very intimidating fighting game. And I say all this to, to say, it, I, I think this is the first Tekken game that has a really good practice mode. They, they really do a good job of explaining things through the arcade quest. Um, which I think is why this game is getting like 
you know, exceptional scores, right? Because not only is it fully featured, it's finally doing some of the things that other fighting games have been have been doing well for the past, you know, half decade or decade or so. Like it's finally Tekken's turn and they're kind of going all out with, you know, everything's in the game that, to kind of show you how to play. The pros have all, you know, their frame data and stuff. Like it's all in here. And, and you know, the online is good. I haven't really gone online yet, but I've had, I have heard, um, I mean, literally, I, I started playing this game last night um, for the first time. But um, so, so, despite the fact that Julia is not in the game, you're having a very good time with this. She's not. She's not. She's not in the main roster, and she wasn't in the main roster in seven. Oh, they're gonna. She's gonna be in DLC, isn't she? I would imagine. She, I, I'm most certainly, but like, it's frustrating, right? Because there's been a Chang, Julia Chang or Michelle Chang, which was her mother, since in the main roster in literally in Tekken one where there was like six characters in the main roster, right? It's like if they made or a Mortal Kombat even... game and there wasn't a Sub-Zero or something, right? Well, a... it's, it's like, so So who's the most unpopular Mortal Kombat character who's in all of them? It, Julia Chang is probably that character. She's not Kano? like a super popular Sonia? character, but she's always there, right? Um, and and it's, it's kind of a bummer that she's not in the main roster here because, you know, obviously it's not only just my main, it's like the character that feels good for me to play. Like I'm not confident, a confident Tekka player without Julia, you know, because I can't find another character that really plays like her. Like I need that style of character and, you know, I can't find it. But and the, the thing is when Tekken Tag 2 came out, she was not in the main roster, but JC was. They made her like a luchador and with like a luchador mask and she was like in disguise and she had like wrestling moves which she always had you know a little bit of like wrestling throws and stuff but they made her like this wrestling character but tekken tag 2 is like a non-canon spinoff and she hasn't been back and if they do bring julia back i really hope they bring it bring her back as jc um and they kind of like really flesh out that move set because that would be cool too um so yeah i'm playing ling i always play like xiao yu as like kind of like I got a. I've always got like a pocket show you um, ever since, since Tekken <laughs> three, um, but you know I I, I want to fuck with some of the new characters. Rain is just really cool, um, but yeah, we've been going a while. I just I just want to say shout out to um, uh, the they I, don't, I forget what it's called, but they basically let you just pick any Tekken soundtrack from over the years. Like like oh, they have they cool. have it's called like jukebox mode or whatever. And I just went in there and I chose the Tekken two like soundtrack and now like all my fight music my character select music and stuff is like the music from tekken 2 and i fucking nice. love that soundtrack tekken tekken has had such good soundtracks over the years and like i'm sure it's good in this one too but like fuck it dude i've been listening to like the tekken 2 soundtrack and i love that shit and they it's just integrated in in like such a cool way um and like i think it was kind of in the last game but it was like you had to like pre-order it and they like sold it but here it's just there and that's just fucking cool tekken ball is back you know yeah i was gonna ask that's a very important question for me how is tekken ball well i haven't i mean look there's a lot of modes i haven't fucked with tekken ball yet but i know it's back i saw it in the menu and that's super hype tekken ball was like this tekken 3 mode that was like super cool it was like volleyball with tekken yes it was so good it was so good it was really cool that sounds awesome yeah, the story mode's cool. All these modes are cool, and just you know, like even the even the AI, Tekken, I, in my opinion, has always had notoriously bad fighting game AI, which a lot of fighting games don't have great AI. In fact, if you only fight AI, you're probably just becoming a bad fighter because you're you're learning tricks to fight the AI that aren't going to work on human opponents. But like this is the first Tekken game I can recall where like uh, the ghost AI is like actually consistently finishing long juggles and stuff which you know is kind of a big part of tekken right these air combos where you're like juggling an enemy all the way to the wall and like doing wall damage and like the ai is like pulling this shit off and it's like kind of crazy so you know this seems like even if you're not going online like there's a lot here to do but um you know just between like the story mode and all this like mode there's all kinds of unlocks you know you're getting money to buy stuff to customize your characters and whatnot they got cool new characters, but um, yeah. And the online mode is supposed to be way better than it was. So, yeah, man, are we in the? Are, it's, is it's it a safe real to one. say? Is it safe to say we're like in the golden era of like fighting cool. games? Yeah. Why are you like, like, gonna make these? Segments? Why? <laughs> what, Nick, why are you addicted to these sweeping declarations? Yeah. No, I don't know. <laughs> like, like, what are the odds of getting like an like a really good Mortal Kombat? Looking a really good for the headline, really good tech, Tekken, and like 
within a yeah. year of each other. It's crazy. Yeah, you see that, but like, What's but like next? the actual Guilty FGC Gear? is. is I mean, Guilty Gear's pretty been cool pretty good on... for a while, right? Um, uh, counterpoint: those games Mortal actually Kombat. suck. Mortal wow. Kombat has actually been a little. Uh, people have been cooling on that one. It's not the history is not remembering that one as fondly, and it's sad to say that. Mortal, history from Mortal is Kombat One, which hasn't even been out a year. I know. Well, I'm just saying, months. like. I mean, granted. I mean, I could be wrong. I don't have my ear to the ground the way you do about fighting games, but I also I feel like people cooled on Street Fighter Six too, or maybe I'm wrong. Um, I feel I feel no, like, no, like I don't feel like just I heard moved anybody talk back about into Street Fighter their, Six. They just moved I, back into their niche communities. Yeah, it's kind of that. It's kind of that. Right? I mean, the, the like, problem like, is, is that Mortal Kombat One came out within a couple months of a numbered Street Fighter game. Like it's got a well, lot like to live up to. Oh, like oh, oh, but, oh, but Mortal Kombat had a number different. two. Yeah, but like Tekken's the audiences for it. Street Fighter and the audiences for Mortal Kombat, and even and the audiences for Tekken. I, I mean, there's obviously overlap. There's some overlap because a lot of people just really love fighting games in general. But I feel like yeah, all three of these games Smash, kind of cater to like, different types of fighting game players. Yeah, so. but and they're also like the three biggest fighting game franchises minus Smash, right? Yeah, it's, it's just. I don't know. It, it, Tekken's been gone for a long. Like seven came out a long time ago. That was a, originally an arcade only launch, and it was like years before that even went to consoles. Think about that. That's a long time ago, and and it's just nice to see that this one seems like a lot of people are playing it. A lot of people are, you know, it's getting really good reviews. Like Tekken used to be on top of the world. Like when Tekken three came out, that was like literally one of the best selling games on PlayStation. It was like ten million plus, right? And like yeah. the series is kind of like. Sh- it's kind of gone in terms of sales kind of like had its ups and downs like Tekken tag two was a bomb. It's just nice to kind of see it back on top again. But you know, then again, seven was really good and popular. So yeah. Jay hit says Tekken seven was an arcade in 2015 for reference. That's fucking crazy. That's <laughs> like, bananas. I, I, I don't even think Jin was in the game when that launched. It didn't even have Jin in the main roster. It was, it was like not many characters. It was crazy. But yeah, anyways, that's it. First oh. DLC characters, Eddie. I have a pocket Eddie, so I'm pretty excited about that. But um, I want Julia. So, of course, of course. Oh, you, you know, right. Bandai Namco is going to have robust DLC plans. Oh, of course. Oh, shit. Yeah. There, there's probably Pauly... better choices. Oh, we don't. I'll save that for my four player minute. Perfect. And actually, that's a perfect way to transition to our four player minute. Oh, shit. And it's the, it's four time to wrap up the show yeah. with our four player minute. Our final thoughts Boy, for the week. And I'll just roll it into Brad because he's already talking about Tekken anyway. So, um, well, DLC characters. It's funny because that's relevant. Uh, there was a Harada tweet and a Harada tweet and oh, that, God. that got some gained some traction. And he was quote tre- tweeting some. Basically, someone was like, dude, put Tifa in fucking Tekken. And he quote tweeted and he was like, look. I would love for Tifa to be in Tekken, but yada, yada, yada. We, we haven't no made any uh, determinations about guest characters and, you know, yet. Max, Maximilian dude was out there like, dude, if you've ever liked or never liked or retweeted a, a anything, this is the tweet to do it, you know, to start or whatever. You know, he like, I don't know how many likes it got up to, but like, man, anything with Tifa, Tifa Lockhart is the perfect Tekken guest character. I really hope that, you know, and for years, people have always also always wanted Kiryu Kazuma, but they've never been able to do it because Kiryu does not hit women and you've hit a lot of women playing Tekken and I don't know what, so maybe you can get like a villain. Like, <laughs> is there a character? What about Ichiban? The, Does he hit women? Ichiban, <laughs> he would, he Damn would it. hit women if it saved her. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Ichiban wouldn't hit a woman. Right. And Majima wouldn't either. That's the thing. Is there an iconic enough character that would definitely hit women? <laughs> From, from the Yakuza series. Well, it was a good run, everyone. We made it to 781 episodes. Seems a bit <laughs> chauvinist to me. Uh, okay, you, know, you know what? Who's the most? Ooh, you know, there's some good villains. You know, there's some good villains. The Yakuza 2 villain. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Hey, okay. But whatever. You know, it got me thinking about the- guest characters. And I, I really, oh, Majima does hit women. Oh, wait, I mean, he's always been kind of a. a Said my bad guy. He's that he's, he's, Brad. He's, the Vegeta of, he's a bad boy. He's a bad boy. You know, this is a year to what? do Tifa as a guest character because considering they can like pair it, they can like use Rebirth's release as kind of like a co-marketing, right? They can a marketing push for it. Like 
put Tifa in the game the same year they do the remake with of of Seven. But but man, that if they sense. got Majima and like Tifa, like I really hope they do better with the guest characters. They had what some about cool that dude from Judgment. Seven. Does he hit women? They they did. <laughs> <laughs> the dude from Judgment does not hit women. No, no, no. I don't think you're going to see Yagami hit a woman. <laughs> but but uh, he's a lawyer. <laughs> he's not even a Yakuza guy. <laughs> he's just a lawyer. <laughs> he's never been in the Yakuza. <laughs> um, not to say that lawyers can't hit women. What are we talking about here? Guest characters. I hope it's better. Um, because, you know, Seven had... Noctis from Ugh. Final Fantasy. It had fucking Negan from The Walking Dead, which <laughs> and and the reason I bring up the tweet is because that all stemmed from a some some random tweet where some fucking asshole was like, hey, you should put Negan in Tekken. And then Harada was like, Yeah, that would be crazy. And then a year later, they announced the DLC for Negan. Like this is random asshole. Somebody, on Twitter somebody made this happen. Idea. Oh my god! But it was probably thinking like he probably really liked Walking Dead, and he was probably he hits like, women. Mm, mm, too many of those characters wouldn't hit a woman, but Negan would. So he ended up in Tekken. I don't know. Oh my uh, god! So yeah, I don't know. Just thinking can't, about can't even guess characters. That's all. I'm so glad you finished that thought, Brad. That could have World gone Tell- so bad. World Teller, World Teller says, "Forspoken girl." I don't remember I mean, her name. That is, uh, don't do that. But no. I mean, Negan was a bad choice. So, I mean, they've made definitely made bad choices before. I don't so know enough about make Tekken to, to make to to really know what makes a good or bad guest character. So, okay, well, I'll fucking tell you. There's this new character. I don't even know his name. I refuse to learn his name. I'm never gonna play a second of this new character. He has swords and guns and knives and shit. Get that shit out of Tekken, okay? Tekken is started as it was like a martial arts i mean granted there's like a bear and a giant robot and a kangaroo and stuff but it's like a martial arts game right you know it's not a weapons game there's one character that had a weapon and it was yoshimetsu and and he did barely even used his sword and now everyone Victor apparently is, Nina Williams is shooting guns and her combos and stuff now it's like tekken's getting a little too crazy let's rein it back in i want some i want i want tifa because she uses fisticuffs right um so yeah I guess yep. Kunimitsu has a knife, but whatever. That's all. All right. Good show. Good show. All right. Uh, Chris Davis, why don't you go next? Okay. I will try to do my four player minute while not dying. Um, oh, that's, that's good. Allergies. Yeah. That's, yeah that's Cedar. Cedar. Uh, my four player minute is uh, you motherfuckers get, should get hype for the Game of the Year content because. I want to get that out as soon as possible. We got Brad's video coming up really quick, followed by Ed. Nick's video is already out. Crispy, You're, I know you it. want to make a video, but I'm going to have to stop you for this year. Yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, damn it. OK, I'll get you next year. Yeah, you, Look, you only play like just five put it games. Off another, so. If we put it off another year or two, I'm just going to do a top 10 of the decade. Do it. Let's fucking do it. I like it. I Don't like tempt it. this man. Uh Chris, you could send me a list if you have one, Crispy. If you have one. If you I know you don't like to put things in boxes, but if you had a list, you could send it to me. Just oh, I've it. got a list. Okay, but you, send it to me. the thing is you eventually have to make we, we have to make a video for you. Whether that means that you just send us a list and we do all the work for uh-huh. you and put words in your mouth. I'll just I'll do my best crispy impersonation. Dude, Talk that's no like, oh, fuck that. We got technology for that. We can deep fake the shit out of him. That's my yeah, dream. Crispy's, Crispy's like that was my plan all along. Oh, deep GPT fake me. Deep fake me. Yeah, let let's have an AI create <laughs> his top ten video. <laughs> Guys, we gotta stop broaching these terrible subjects on this podcast. Okay, Chris Davis, finish your thought. But yeah, uh, videos should be out. Most of them should be out by Sunday. Uh, the I hope to have mine out by then. No guarantees, but uh, check it out. They they are coming. Oh Sweet. my God, Nick! Nick was you didn't really put good. Resident Evil Four on your list. I know I, did. I didn't put Resident Evil Four on my list. Look. Nobody likes Resident Evil Four. It's no. a dumb game that already came <laughs> it's out. Game. It's literally it's a phenomenal game. I, I, just because it was a remake, that was the only reason I kept it off. But here's <laughs> the no, problem: I put, I can't no even shame. say that. I can't even say that. I there there was there was again. I, I I must say this: all the games I'm putting in my my second video were games that at one point were the number Your ten slot video? on my list. Your second and there video. Were, there was a 
there there was a top 10 where Resident Evil 4 is in that slot. I replaced it with another remake. Like my actual oh. my you've watched oh, my top yeah, 10. Yeah. My top 10 starts with a remake. That's not Resident that's Evil a, 4. That's a more interesting remake, I think ultimately. Like that game needed a remake more, but yeah, yeah. I just, you I, know, I like to award games that are actually reward games that are actually acknowledge games that are actually doing brand new stuff I suppose maybe. I don't know. I did have that Taxi Soaker remake on my list though, a couple of years ago. So I don't know. You Anywho, did. Crispy, final thought for the week. Uh, final thought. So, uh, since the end of last week, I've been playing, uh, Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven Phantom a- Liberty. Fuck yes! And uh, games that didn't deserve a spot. Fuck yeah. you. <laughs> I haven't finished it yet, which is why I didn't really want to just like talk about it on the podcast. But I'm not going to be here next week, mm-hmm. so I should have finished it by two weeks from today. Okay. Um, and then I'll probably talk more about it. But I just want to say right now, I think I'm like halfway through the actual bulk of the content of the expansion, and I'm starting it on the playthrough I did earlier last year, which I had basically gone up to the last like couple story missions and then stopped right. so like i'm kind of I, i'm kind of like picking at the bottom of the barrel for like content here and basically just doing what's in phantom liberty um it's so sick it's so good yes. Yes. Like, it's really it's so good. good um it's really good i hope they do more like i hope they do more big story expansions like this because this one's really good um idris elba is fucking cool as agent yep. reed even Songbird with his awesome. fucking awful American accent. Uh, like, yeah, Songbird's really cool. Um, they're, they're doing more shit with, like, the Black Wall and, like, the yeah. new boys and stuff, which which I Dude. thought was really cool in the base game. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. It's I was so sick. blown away, too, by just, like, that Phantom Liberty DLC, not only does Keanu Reeves get woven into that as well, like, his character, yeah. but, like, the the stuff that happens in Phantom Liberty can have dramatic effects on how the rest of your story mm. in the main game plays out. Yeah. Yeah. There's like a whole secret Genre ending games. they added, right? Yeah. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. yeah, oh, yeah. It's so yeah. good. That's pretty That's cool. cool. Um, like, I mean, I'm excited that this game got there, but, and I know it's controversial, Nick, cause you know, it's on your list and I, I think you already suggested it was, um, yes, I did. Look, I heard a, the perfect analogy like just recently and it's like these motherfuckers turned in a paper and got an F and yeah. then everyone told them all the things, all the answers they got wrong. And then they went back and they fixed it all and turned it in again. And now they're like, give us our a like, look, we're happy. The game is good now, but like, you don't deserve the a you motherfuckers. Like you're, you're lucky you didn't rip us all off and you finally had enough money to make the game. Great. Um, but hey, at the end of the day, I what guess, I care about I, at the end of the think, day, all I care about is they let's the not game. hand them any trophies. As all listen, as I will say this: I will say this. I do think half of the sin of the original game was like, okay, it was a buggy mess when it came out, and the systems maybe weren't as deep as what like we wanted them to do. But like, the real sin wasn't in they made a bad game. Like the game was pretty good. Like the story stuff was always good. Yeah. You know, it just didn't fucking work that well like it was just kind of a buggy mess the real sin of that game was the marketing was like the way they bait and switch i mean i don't even know if it was bait and switch or if it was just like they showed off a couple things and were like this is what the game is right now and then people lost their shit like people were talking about that game like they were gonna fucking live inside of it like like i don't and i a lot of that is cd project red's fault but some of these ideas that people were like getting in their head before that game came out, I don't know where that was coming from. I don't know where that was coming from. People got fucking insane with that game. And I yeah. think a lot of it was just these are the Witcher 3 guys, like, you know, and and yeah. Witcher 3 was amazing. But Witcher 3 did the same fucking shit where it's like they released a game that looked pretty good and like had a cool story, but like the gameplay system sucked and then they redesigned it like you know six months to a year after and then it was like cool like it was fine and whatever i like i don't know that cd project red deserves an a for the last for like the launch of cyberpunk but like 
as it exists right now and phantom liberty like that stuff's pretty good so like to comment on what brad because brad's alluding to the fact that i did include it on my list and at the end of the day my list i talked you into doing phantom liberty and not cyberpunk but here's the thing and that's sure and you can say it's about phantom liberty all you want because i think that's a pretty that's a fair assessment i played phantom liberty for 20 hours by itself in 2023 so sure you can you can, and he put Phantom Liberty on the video, but I talk about cyberpunk as a whole in that yeah. in my video, and I allude to Phantom Liberty as well. But at the end of the day, uh, it's one of those games, like, back in 2020 when it launched, it was a game that I was so excited for, I wanted it to be good. I wanted It's one of those games I was so excited for, I wanted it to be good because I wanted to be, I wanted to be at, at the end of the year to be able to say, this is one of my favorite games of the year, and I didn't get that opportunity, so this was my only chance to go back and do that now. My only a chance chance I'm gonna have to do that, so I went ahead and did it. I know. And let me say, I, I will a lot say, of games have at the end of the day, that. I just care about it being a, a fun video game and a good video game. However, the how how they got there sucks. That's true. But it happened. That's true. They got there. Uh, to play devil's advocate a little bit here, though, like I do also think like it is like while it's good to see a game that like wasn't quite there on launch get there eventually, like they keep adding updates, especially like free updates and stuff and, and improving the game design and getting it better. The stuff that they are changing, like just like with the Witcher three, like the stuff that they changed to make the game better. I'm thinking of like little things, even like, like how they, they remove stats and perks and stuff from clothing and just made it like cosmetic shit, you know, which yeah, that fixed a big problem from the original game. But it's like, what were you fucking thinking in the first place? Like, mm. like, like you made so many mistakes that were just like, if you talk to anybody, All like they might have told you, games. they might have told All you, like, Witcher this wasn't good. This. Yeah. yeah. You know, like, what Project is Red that? Always done this. What is that? Like, what? They, like, what they is put out ultimate versions of their game where they just reworked everything, basically? It's yeah. But like, because like some of the stuff that they're fixing is so blatantly just like. Bad. weird and bad and it's yeah. like what is your internal bad. quality like i will say this who's who's making these choices I, I will say this i played all of my experience with the witcher 3 with the exception of going and playing blood and wine like years later right no almost all of my ex- experience with blood with with the witcher 3 i played in the year it came out i played all the way through it I loved it. I don't necess- I don't have nearly as much negativity about that game as I did. I played like 10 hours of Cyberpunk in 2020 and I took it out of my PlayStation, put it in a box and I sent it back to Amazon and said I don't want to ever play yeah, this game. I think you were it's just It's a totally it's a, it's a, it's a, it, I think you were just being cranky, Nick. No, I, I mean I was I mean, pissed. A lot of people stopped I was, playing that game. I was I was, yeah, I was pissed yeah. off playing that yeah. game. It was like one of the biggest disappointments I, of recent memory for me. To this day, it's the only game I've ever returned after playing it. It's yeah, not, I don't, I don't know. I'm That's, so you, glad. I I'm don't like. Yeah, I don't know. I just don't. That, that really game remember made being my game of the year game. list that year. And yeah, I, I think if you would have stuck it out and been able to look, uh, deal with the bugs, like you probably would have put it on your list too. Dude, the, I'm only talking about heart, my experience. It was the past core the of that thing. game was like unchanged and good. Like, I, sure, yeah, I, sure. I don't just like say, the year it came out. It crossed a line for me. Like, just I was having Not so much, you. so many bugs yeah. and technical issues. I just didn't want to deal with it anymore. So I, I sent it Dude, back. I it wasn't that. even just bugs. There was like terrible design stuff, like cops spawning in behind you for no reason. I mean, it was just stuff that you, bad you had the experience, which was which is a really big deal for me when I play games. Yeah, like, I mean, yeah. Whatever we've talked a lot about. Yeah, I mean, that's I a big, it's a big topic. It's a big, it's yeah. a big topic. Uh, but I am glad you're playing Phantom Liberty. It's I fucking loved, I fucking loved every minute of that DLC. It's it's fantastic. So it's great. When is this motherfucker gonna play Alan Wake too? That's what I want to know. The Who, sh- me? After the sh- yeah, after the shit you gave control, um, you should about play Alan Wake being 2. just a fucking shooter. Like they're like Alan Wake two is not even like for me but that game is doing like so much weird ambitious interesting things like it's yes. a crime that you have not played that game Chris, you should Chris you should play it and that you should play the final draft they, you know, literally, they, they did the thing you wanted them to do which was make something interesting and they did it this time yeah, let him, let him but, get, play the base game before you start telling him to play final draft you know, i got I got Suicide Squad coming out oh, every you week. Bitch. You bitch. <laughs> <bitch. laughs> <laughs> 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 Come on, get your shit together. I'm going to play the Suicide Squad game over All here. All right. 
my four player minute, my final thought starts now. I just want to say, uh, since the last time I was on this podcast, I, I installed uh, Moonlight and I've been playing, oh, yeah. I've been playing PC games on my Steam Deck in bed at night. Uh, and that Bro, is PC cool. gamer Nick Henderson. I have been playing. I, I I've been playing Prince of Persia in bed because like, Prince of Persia did not release on Steam. You have to buy it through Ubisoft's stupid store. So I'm playing. I'm playing Prince of Persia: The Lost Crown, 60 frames a second, looking smooth as hell on my Steam Deck while laying in bed at night before I go to sleep. That's really cool. I've also played several sessions of Starfield at 60 frames a second, running smooth as hell on my Steam Deck while laying in bed. It's just, I it's it's so you're it's, saying it's, you've been sleeping good. I'm been sleeping good. No, it's it's weird because it's like I was like, I, oh god, I went, to, I took my Steam Deck to work, and I was like, I don't even know if my work has fast enough Wi-Fi to handle this. And oh, I did like a speed not. test because I've never really had a need to do a speed test at work, right? Yeah. Oh my god, it was abysmal. I was like, I'm not even gonna bother trying. Oh, it's like two megabytes per second down or something. I was like, like I'm I said, not. This is a sitting on the couch, laying in bed kind of. And for that, it's great. So. Like just being able to be like, oh, I can go play games and just kind of, I can hang out with my wife, just kind of be in the same room with her while also doing the thing that I, I want to be doing. And that's pretty cool. Uh, I brought this concept up to you and you yelled at me like I was a moron. <laughs> I, I, didn't, I, didn't call you, I didn't call you a moron. I just, you were treating me like I was a crazy person for not necessarily. Well, yeah. Maybe you know, whatever. That conversation went. Uh, I'm, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm giving you your due here, Brad. You, you incur, you've been encouraging me to try this. And uh, I'm, I'm, I did it and it, it's um, working. It's you also it's waited good. till Ed told you that it was legit also. To find, yeah, I did. I really did. Fucker. <laughs> oh, dude, it's cool though. It's cool. Like one thing, I like, uh, I, I, because you, I didn't realize it was command line based, right? So you launch the games by setting up the command lines in Sunshine on your PC, or, yeah. right? So I was like, can I just, I, I set up a like when I go when I open up my Steam Deck now and I open up Moonlight, I have a, I set up a command line for shutting the PC down, so I can play my games. Yeah. And then just shut the PC down. From I thought there. you were gonna say your your porn tabs or whatever. Yeah, no, I get porn set up too. Yeah, you know, so I can just you know, jerk it in bed. It's pretty nice. Pretty nice <laughs> on that All beautiful right. OLED screen. <laughs> on that beautiful OLED screen. Yeah. Um. Anyways, uh, that's our show this week, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out. Thank you for tuning in. Um. And I, it, you know. It's next week's gonna be fun as well. We'll be talking about uh, fucking like a dragon. Yakuza. I would imagine. I started Yakuza. it, but I didn't play enough to talk about it tonight. And so. I think no, I think no one will be. Here. I don't want to speak for him, but I think no one will be here. And I imagine he's probably playing like a dragon. No, we'll just ponder um, it into existence by saying it out loud that Nolan will be here. And we will talk about what actually transpires at tomorrow's state of play. And mm. I would imagine I will be playing some Persona Three. Fuck you, Brad. I'm gonna talk about it because I've never played Persona Three ever in my life. Um, Dude, I'm just so, giving you a hard time. It's fine. So, it's valid uh, to like we got, Persona. We'll have lots of cool stuff to talk about next week as well. So in the meantime, guys, we invite you to join us in Discord at discord.gg slash four player. Uh, pop in there, say hello. You can go to our introductions channel. Uh, introduce yourself. Let us know what you're playing. I always love to hear what everybody's playing at the time. And um, of course, of course, as Chris Davis said, if you're interested, if you're so inclined, please take the time to watch our top 10 videos um, and let us know what you think. Share your thoughts on our choices. We please, always appreciate that. Please leave a comment, man. You Comments know, the struggle's nice. real these days. You know, I, there ain't so many eyes on the stuff we do, but it, we do care about these videos, right? You know? I make yeah. a point and, to, to, respite, to reply to every comment left on the YouTube channel on my videos. So I mean, I'm not going to do that, but I will read them. Um, and I mean that. And <laughs> it sucks <laughs> when, you know... I will take them to heart. You know, so I, you know, I kind of... I don't know if this is, you know, I wear my heart on my sleeve when I'm talking about games in these videos. I, I don't go in with the script and it's mostly just like a stream of consciousness. And I started this year of like, man, I'm going to keep this snappy and quick. <laughs> I got through the num my number 10 in a minute and a half. I'm like, I'm making good time. Look, I'm, I speak for you have no idea on my number one. <laughs> so, but 10 I, but fucking man, minutes talking about one game. And I was like, but like, you know, that's antithetical to what I, I don't want recently created these games for those, you for. All those words. Even if I'm, even if I spend like a good minute just laughing at Bioware, it's not fair. I'm sorry. But, you know, I just want y'all to listen and let me know what you think. That's how I know you, you watched. Um, yep. So, yeah. You know, it's funny. It's always funny. Like I post when I, when I, when I hit the publish button, like when I launched my video, right. And I posted my video in the game of the year channel in discord, right. 
And uh, within like three minutes, someone was like, oh, man, that number one, Nick. I was like, motherfucker, my video is 33 <laughs> minutes long. And oh, yeah. this everyone's going to skim it. I know. I know. I know. Yeah, I know. They don't I know. care. Just to see. I'm just I'm just saying I'm just I'm just. I'm just teasing. I know 30 minutes is a lot to ask from some for, from some people. I'm just saying we appreciate anyone and everyone who watches the video. It takes the time to let us know what they think. We even have a game of the year 2023 channel set up in Discord. If you want to actually talk to us about our choices, like have a back and forth, that's a great place to do it. Um, I'm going to get so many dislikes on my video. You have no fucking idea. Don't forget to go dislike Chris's video. When it's <laughs> Look, I'm man, I'm just kidding. I just like or dislike if we can just you know get any sort of engagement i'm happy dude thumb down my video just go i just like it. talking to people about my list that's all i don't yeah. i don't even give a shit about the numbers anymore anyways um thank you so much for listening thank you for tuning in of course in the meantime you can find all of our episodes on fourplayernetwork.com we will be back next tuesday night here on twitch to talk about video games again until then have a lovely uh lovely e- lovely evening and uh be good to each other play video games good night Fast.